<laughs> Always a good sign. I'm Chair Emily Kite, and I would like to welcome you to the April 2023 Historic Resources Commission meeting. The HRC is a quasi-judicial body that is governed by North Carolina general statutes, the City of Asheville's Unified Development Ordinance, and Buncombe County Ordinance. We are authorized to hear requests for certificates of appropriateness for alterations, demolitions, new construction, and other work within historic districts or for the alteration and demolition of historic landmarks and other duties, including preliminary review of subdivisions, as specified in the ordinances for the HRC. I will now ask commission members and staff to introduce themselves. I'm Leslie Carey. Uh, I have a master's degree in historic preservation. Uh, Amy Moxley, architect. Hi, Sue Oliva. I am a uh, Doctorate of History, American History. Uh, Emily Kite, local architect. Emily Spring. I've got a master's degree in historic preservation, and I work in residential construction and design. Maria De Sassi, and I'm an architect. Uh, Sarah Gross. I have a master's in anthropology and archaeology. Shannon Watkins. I'm a local real estate agent. Will Hornaday, president of Albemarle Park, uh, local historic district. Chris German, local architect. 30 years. Janice Ashley, legal advisor to the HRC. Oh, well, that's Avery. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes, that's Avery. Um, we are going to consider the minutes from the March meeting of the HRC. The minutes include findings of fact and conclusions of law. Are there any corrections? Is there a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. We will now begin the evidentiary hearings for items listed on the agenda. As a quasi-judicial proceeding, the HRC is not setting policy, nor are we soliciting public opinion on the desirability of an application. 
The HRC hears and considers evidence presented and applies the standards set forth in the guidelines and standards of the specific historic district for that application. The HRC must make its decision upon competent, material, and substantial evidence to determine the facts of the hearing. The HRC will use judgment and discretion to apply the standards contained in the relevant guidelines to the facts. <coughs> Commissioners, in voting for an item, will not have had a fixed opinion that's not susceptible to change, will not have a conflict of interest, and will not have engaged in ex parte communication regarding the application. The following are the rules for speaking. This meeting is open to the public, but participation is limited to interested parties who wish to provide comment and testimony regarding the proposal. If you will be speaking as a witness, please focus on the facts and how they relate to the relevant historic district standards and guidelines, not personal preference or opinion. Witnesses must swear or affirm their testimony. At this time, I will administer the oath for all individuals who intend to provide witness testimony on any applications today. So if you plan to talk today, now would be your opportunity to come to the front and to be sworn in. That covers everybody. Excellent. Okay, raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the information you present during the hearing for a certificate of appropriateness or preliminary subdivision approval before the Historic Resources Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Do you? Thank you. Okay, we're going to move to our first public hearing item, and it looks like, um, do we want to make them to continue the Biltmore Village project before we get started, Alex? Or do we want to wait? Okay, so we need a motion to continue the project at uh, Brook Street and Hendersonville Road in Biltmore Village. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? And that motion carries. Uh, that will make our first item on the agenda uh, 8 Houston Street in Montford. This is old business project that we um, has previously been presented. We'll start Alex with your staff report. <coughs> um, thank you Chair Kite and members of the Commission. Uh, it's noted this is an old business item left over from the uh, what month are we in? April. The March meeting. <laughs> um, so um, I think the bulk of the discussion last time around centered around just a couple of things, primarily the railing around the driveway. I know Vice Chair Springy were not here last time, but um, I think most of the discussion was not on the design of the structure itself because I think they, everyone had kind of coalesced around that it was, um, you know, a design that meets the standards. Mm -hmm. So. Really, the, the outstanding issue was the, um, the railing that's shown um, on the site plan on the top right, the red line that goes around the northern property boundary um, and meets the house. Um, because that's a retaining wall that drops off to the adjacent property or will be a retaining wall, um, it's, it's six feet tall. They are required by building code to have a, a, some kind of barrier there. Um, it's at present a, a wood railing that would match the proposed railing on the back deck of this house. It doesn't have a front porch railing. Um, so there was just a lot of back and forth last time about railing versus fence. And I think we all landed on being, being a railing versus a fence. We talked about potentially, the, or just asked them to look at potentially shifting the building footprint over a little bit to the southwest so that p perhaps there was more room to screen the railing in some way, but I think there it's just such a tight lot. They really just don't have room to move. I met with the architect and the applicant who's here um, a couple of weeks ago to talk about it, and it's it's just limited. So one thing we did um, discuss was I know Commissioner Carey mentioned that you I think you live in Montford Hills, right? Mm -hmm. And that maybe one of your neighbors has the kind of cable, the um, post and cable. Um, fencing or railing, if you will, and that maybe that was an option because it would be more less visible within the the landscape. 
that would be something new that the commission hasn't approved before. So I just throwing that out there is something that, that I did talk to them about. I think the, the wood railing is their first choice. The other option I threw in there was maybe it's all a wall. <laughs> um, but I th that, I think, feels closed in within the site than if it's a wall and it's such a narrow driveway. Um, so their first choice is the, the wood railing as it was proposed. Um, there haven't really been any substantial changes, although there are revised plans in there that just correct the, or reconcile the site plan with the, um, I think it was the perspective renderings and maybe one of the elevation drawings that show the railing coming out beyond the front of the, of the front building plane. Um, and so I, they corrected the, the plans to match. Um, and then the trash enclosure was also moved at my suggestion around to the corner, front corner of the lot so it's not like front and center in the, in the middle of the property at the street. Um, and I think that was everything. I know that the applicant has some photos. He's trying to email me um, at present, but maybe we're having a little bit of connectivity yeah. issue with or what the email won't send. Um, but we can figure out, try to help figure out getting you plugged in potentially over here. Um, Avery, our tech wizard, can help you with that. Um, and then there's just a few little last minute things that we need that could be, um, I think actually all of this is just kind of leftover that I hadn't edited out. Um, I think it still would be helpful to know, I'm still not 100% clear on and this is kind of, I've seen this happen, happening recently with our new construction projects where not thinking about every site detail and then people are, you know, realizing they need a walkway or a landing somewhere and they just build it without coming back to us to get approval. So I want to make, you know, double sure we understand what's happening as you exit off that deck. Like, are you, is, is there a walkway going somewhere? Or is it just a landing and if so then the plan should show that are you just walking out into the grass that's fine but it just <coughs> needs to show that um, or, or we need to be clear on that um, um, the exact window specifications are something that is outstanding that's something we could accept at staff level since we know what the style is and, and the Commission has approved that two over one style um, in other projects um, and we need a stone sample and the mechanical specifications, and I think that's it for this project. Does anybody have any questions for me? Staff okay with the wood fence <laughs> for the top of the, or what is the staff recommendation on the fence? I think it's a railing, and I think what um, Aaron, the applicant, is trying to send me right now is to show what the what it would look like from the neighboring property because he has plant the neighbor just that's that was a newly constructed house and so he's just recently installed his landscaping and so once it matures it should shield the wall and hopefully the railing um, to some degree in the future it just won't be right out of the gate obviously so i i tend to think the wood railing is maybe the more appropriate option um, it's just more traditional looking than the contemporary appearance of the, the cable railing. And we've had people ask for that on decks and things like that in the past where we've said it looks too contemporary for Montford. And so it's kind of somewhere in the middle, I guess, to answer your question on that. Um, what, are you, what do you think? Do you think the... I think the guideline, how the back railing and that railing match is um, I fall in line with that um, or the standards move that to keep it congruous with, within the property I think the other thing that makes it once I you know looked at this again it being that it's connected into the side elevation of the house it's almost some in some way an extension of the house in a way rather than just being like out in space by itself on top of a wall um, if that helps almost raises a deck railing kind of in that sense mm -hmm. that it's attached and that's what it looks like from the front facade is like there's maybe another porch right that makes sense other questions for Alex is there anything else you'd like to add the applicant 
Are you? I just want to clarify really quick that I created this slide before I got the revised plans today <coughs> that were corrected. <laughs> so if anybody was wondering, it's different than what the revised plans were. So. Come up if you would mind. I'm sorry. I'm Aaron Zellin, I'm a property owner and developer. Um, so I'd like to at least call out the things that were changed on this slight revision. And you can see kind of in the bubbles if you look at the yep. plans. So I think the things that um, are germane to the conversation would be around the, the egress from the port, the back porch, you can start wherever, but that the use of the back porch. Um, and I'm attempting to try to show you the photos, and for some reason they, it won't, they won't send on the mail server, so I apologize for that. Do you want to see what's connected to you? Sure, yeah, if that's possible. But it, so the, it's very strange. We don't know the final grade of the back of the property, of course, but clearly if you stand looking at the property um, and it, it, it goes down, you know, down to this swale, and then it also tilts to the left. And it drops off quite precipitously in the left corner, I mean like really big, like 20 feet. Hence, that's the idea of moving the building as far as we could to the right side of the building um, envelope and the lot. So to that end, <clears throat> there's gonna be, and we try to find a medium between how much exposed foundation it would be without having this giant crawl space. If you look at some of the ones on, that aren't in the HSC down Houston, it's like it's like a, a fortress. <laughs> yeah, so we're trying to avoid that. Um, and the bottom level would be kind of like a flex space, not a ADU or anything that's gonna be sort of a residency. And then to that end, so it, it there'll be certainly, if you can see on the, the plan, there's posts that kind of drive it themselves down on the low side. Where the final grade will be, it's hard to tell. We're not going to change the grade. That's not the intent. However, I think the intent is to have that whole side open or if, the recommendation of the committee have an open, an open, not a gate, but just an opening that would, that would go off onto the, would fall off into either mulch or, or grass, likely mulch. So you're thinking that the, on the site plan, the sort of north, North that's north. right. That's I think the that's northeast north. face of that back deck will will be a grade. Yes, and it, you know maybe there's one. St it's yeah. hard. To, you know we, we don't want to change the contour, right? That's the intention. In the front, we know we can and we need to because we need to raise the building up slightly, but we want to avoid adding an additional um, fill content to the back of the lot. Um, yeah. So it, so. I think I asked Aaron Wilson to go ahead and just leave that end open. It's not a very big um, structure because we're impinging on the setback in the rear and we only can do so many feet as you know. So we kept it quite narrow. I think it's eight or feet, maybe eight or 10 or 12, I think. Sorry, I'm doing it from memory. Is it 12? Um, so I'm open to having the rail come to some point because it, it again, it drops at two angles back into the side. So, you know, there's always going to be a post and it might be more difficult to raise that far right corner, but certainly as you get closer to the structure, it'll be more on grade. So we could put a railing system there and then, then just have an opening. Does that make sense? Yeah. Open yeah. at that end, on the upper right hand corner. Yes. So that opening is going to be a mulch, no, no hard scaping. Well, no, um, you know, that's a great question. I think uh, it's, I don't see the need for much hardscaping there um, that I can set. I mean, I don't see there will be the need. There will be other hardscaping on the property for sure. Um, in the front yard and certainly potentially on the opposite corner on the other side as it falls off very quickly just to quasi retaining block or anything that would be all natural materials um, there. But the answer is really no, yeah. It's kind of just, it's kind of no man's land over there. <laughs> the, and the, the railing on the parking deck, you were fine with that? Like, so yeah, no, I think that would be more than sufficient. Um, and like, with the response, I'm just hoping that the clarification that Aaron Wilson did provides some clarity. I couldn't, it was sort of shades of gray to me. I, I was trying to, with the site plan versus the railing, is that clear now on the draw on the drawing? Yes, he corrected it. It was basically that on the site plan it showed it terminating 
like kind of in line with the front plane of the building. Yes. But then, like if you see on this, this is like on the I'm, elevation. Yeah, this is before the revised plans got to meet uh, today. So this is the older set of plans where you can see the railing coming out beyond the front porch. And yes. So he corrected that. Okay. It's, great. It's matches the site plan now. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the wooden structure would be fine. And Metal structure would be fine, either one, whatever landing like works. Um, and so that, that's, yeah, hopefully that's clear. Um, like I said, the, the, that going back to the, the actual deck, if that railing has to extend some way just to make sure it's not a hazard, that certainly makes sense to me. Um, and it will die on grade there and then should be okay. Um, the other thing is the, the trash receptacle and recycling receptacle, Alex recommended to turn at 90 degrees so that the actual openings don't face the street and push it as far as we can uh, on the site as to not bring it in front of the building structure, which makes perfect sense to me. I don't want the thing sitting there in front of the building. So having it way over to the side, the setback is a great recommendation and canting it. I think Aaron Wilson had provided some additional clarity in terms of height and width, um, and you'll see that on the, the revised plan today. Uh, I'm trying to think what else there was. Some of the more, you know, details around the windows, the gel, I'm gonna package that all up in one day. And once I get my building permits, and I take the certificate of propious, go to the building, so I do a minor work change, uh, along with the hardscaping plan too at the same time. Um, so that's something that wasn't contemplated, but Alex and I spoke about it, and I understand the need for it, um, and I wanna make sure I'm compliant to that end. Um, what else can you think of? Uh, the, the reason the photos, and that's what my intent was to show you the as-built that's there today. I, as you know, we have the house on Cortland, and then there's a bunch of screening. I don't know if we have a table that works. Can I talk to it? Or show you want to make the decision that you want to make? Yeah, Okay, really, sounds great. Brought my sense of humor today. Yeah, you did. Um, what do you think? So now we just have to change it from mine to well, I can kind of show you two. I mean, the laptop's not bad here for this vision's manageable. I took a number, what I did was, in, in, this is taking a number of photos at different angles around the property to give you physical aspect of what I'm dealing with, uh, just because I think it adds credibility to kind of design and the elements of that design. And then also what it is there as is. So the Colton structure was the first structure, then the Six Houston was the one that was just completed, and um, some type of screening bushes that are applicable to both buildings are there. And so then, I mean, they're obviously fairly young, but they, will grow over time. Um, and they, they're only within three, about three feet of the building, or four feet of the building, uh, I'm sorry, the, the property line. Let me just swap this one. We agree bilaterally to talk about doing that because it makes sense. So I did it back in the property in Corland. It, it, it doesn't matter very much. Oh, look at you. That's the old school wow, we did cool. before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, wow, all right. We're back to the olden days. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that is. Holy right, cow. Okay, know. thanks. Yeah, so it, I think, so there's the, the house that was completed six years ago. And these are, um, see all of um, the leave of those trees, bushes? They get probably about 10 feet high and about six feet wide. Obviously, they're not there yet. There's space, there's two, four, six, seven of them. Um, and that is within four feet of the building. So, so I'm going to be really close to the building line, uh, the, uh, the property line, because of the setback. And I think we're only half a foot, no, one foot, excuse me. So I think that will kind of 
screen, that foundational retaining wall over time. It's just not for a few years. So, but it is, that's the intent. He doesn't want to see that either, I don't think. Um, uh, so I, I know that's hard to see. Can, can, does anybody understand? I think we're good. Yeah. yeah. The juxtaposition of how that is and yeah, and then this looks down the property line. Can you guys see that? Yeah. So you can see that's my property in the back right corner and then here's the property stake and you can kind of get a sense, I know. Mm -hmm. So that'd be looking from the street, looking straight down between the two properties. My, I'm gonna, the new construction project on eight is on the left and this is six on the right. The neighbor's trash is further closer to the street than what you're proposing. The trash box. Yeah, that they, was just fixed. Yeah, they actually had to move it because when I went out there to look at the site, I saw that and they did not get approval for it. So they but that's, I'm just trying to get an understanding of placement. Yeah, uh, it, yeah. It, now, now it's actually, I, mean, I took these before he completed the work. He just completed the work from yesterday. Oh. The carpenter was there. Um, I should have taken a picture of that, but it's uh, now it's it, again it's in the same situation. It's, it's if you're facing the street of that property too. Okay, know, great. It, it's right on the left hand side along the property line, which is what I intend to do as well. So that, those are the best pictures that kind of capture it. You're like an Ansel Adams with those pictures. Those are great. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh. Commissioners, other questions for the applicant? I am going to open the floor for public comment. Thank you. I'm going to close the floor for public comment. Discussion, commissioners? Further discussion? We should go back to the old school way. Yeah, that's true. Where we just put papers down every day. <laughs> um, commissioners, discussion or concerns? Are we ready for a motion? Yes. Just one Anybody else want to read the first motion? I'm having technical difficulties. Gotta get used to this. I can read it. I'm not seeing a motion folder. Okay. I, She's got it. Okay. okay. It, it can't I'll, worry. I'll delay. Yeah, I was just delaying a little bit. All right, here we go. Madam Chair, based upon the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, application, two pages, Exhibit B, new construction worksheet, four pages, Exhibit C, plans and drawings, seven pages, Exhibit D, material specifications, 12 pages, Exhibit E, revised plans, seven pages, received March 8, 2023, Exhibit F, revised plans, seven pages, received March 29th, 2023. Exhibit G, revised plans, seven pages, received April 12th, 2023. Exhibit H, additional photos of site, five pages, received April 12th, 2023. And the commissioner's actual inspection and review of subject property by all members except, I move that this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following. One, that the application is to construct a two-story, 2,854 square foot primary structure with stucco foundation, smooth hardy plank siding with six inch reveal, hardy plank shingle siding with six inch reveal, and GAF Timberline HDZ roofing shingles in charcoal color, and standing seam metal roof, or did the standing seam get removed? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, roofing will have decorative wood brackets in gable ends, Windows will be gelled when sight line, two over one SDL double hung, two light casement, and single light fixed aluminum clad in color to be approved. Do you know 
right. the color that black in in the color black doors will be wood rogue traditional series craftsman style and aluminum clad single light front entry will be set within covered porch supported by eight inch square wood posts wood steps wood tongue and groove flooring and painted square wood lattice screening beneath secondary entrance will Secondary entrance with wood landing will be constructed on north elevation, 18 foot by 10 foot wood deck with wood picket railing space three and a half inches on center will be constructed on the rear elevation. Remove two mature trees to accommodate construction. Construct 24 foot long by nine and a half foot wide <coughs> concrete driveway adjacent to northern property boundary. Construct six foot tall stucco retaining wall with painted wood railing around north and west sides of driveway. Construct four foot wide Tennessee flagstone walkway connecting from driveway to front entry. Construct two foot wide by three inch long by four foot tall painted wood trash enclosure. Oh wait, three feet long. Sorry. Uh, wood trash enclosure adjacent to southern property boundary. Foundation plantings will be installed. Ground cover must be established within 15 days of completion of construction, and the remainder of the landscaping must be installed within three years. If archaeological resources are discovered during site work, work will cease until city staff have been notified and have inspected the site. All work will be in accordance with attached and approved drawings and plans. All permits, variances, or approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Number two. That the standards for new construction, primary structures found on pages 92 to 93, decks on pages 38 to 39, walkways, driveways, and off-street parking on pages 50 to 51, landscaping and trees on pages 40 to 41, fences and walls on pages 36 to 37, utilities and mechanical systems on pages 82 to 83, lighting on pages 42 to 43, and archaeology on pages 32 to 33 in the Montford Historic District Design Review Standards, adopted on April 14th, 2010, and amended December 9th, 2019, were used to evaluate this request. Three, this application does meet the design standards for the following reasons. A, new primary structure is cited so that it is similar to the historic pattern in terms of orientation, setback, retention of green space, and spacing between structures. B, new primary structure is designed so that the overall character of the adjacent streetscape and building site is maintained. C, new primary structure is compatible in height, roof form, scale, massing, footprint, material, detail, fenestration, and proportion with surrounding historic buildings and other historic buildings in the district. D, location and size of window and door openings are compatible in placement, orientation, spacing, proportion, size, and scale with surrounding historic buildings. E, materials and finishes are typical of those found in the district. F, deck will be wood and inset from the rear building corners. G, new walkway and retaining wall will be compatible with the site and district in terms of dimension, configuration, materials, color, and texture. H, protective fencing will be installed around critical root zones of existing mature trees. I, mechanical unit will be located on the side elevation and screened with plantings. <coughs> Four, that the action improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of the Montford Historic District. Second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Based upon the foregoing findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued with the following conditions. That window specifications, mechanical unit specifications, and stone sample or image will be submitted for staff review and approval. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion also carries. Okay, we're moving to our next agenda item. Uh, we're starting the new business portion of the agenda. We're in Montford still at 106 Cumberland Avenue. You're only in Montford today. Oh, that's true. To venture anywhere Correct. else. That's true of many times <laughs> this meeting. Well, it is one of the biggest it local is. historic districts in North Carolina. It is big. Yes. Didn't know that. Um, okay, so moving on. Um, this application is for 106 Cumberland Avenue, just to provide some 
context, this is beautiful canopy photo found online today. I tried to pull a street view photo and it was, there's too many trees in the way, so this is a real estate listing photo. Um, um, I just showed the front elevation to provide some context to what we're talking about or the structure that we're talking about, but essentially this the primary part of this project is um, removal of this non-original bump out on the back of this structure. There was a two-story little bump out originally on the structure that's still there. This, the, the part closest in the photo, though, has just been kind of tacked on. You could tell by the, by the um, way the roof form is. If you went out there, it's just tucked up under the, um, the, the original roof. Um, and it has been obviously mucked with over time. The previous owner started to try to do something with the space. It's got a really narrow, small, kind of funky kitchen in there. So they're trying to accommodate some additional space um, um, for the kitchen and for an upstairs bedroom. So it's a pretty, pretty small scale addition that's being proposed. Um, none of the windows in that upper story of the bump out as best we could tell are original to the structure. There is down, um, a little hard to tell in this photo, but um, a little, like on the first floor, uh, there are a couple of original windows there that I did know, I met with um, one of the property owners on the site yesterday, and usually when you all are reviewing projects that involve just wholesale removal of an original window for a construction project like this, they've been required to retain the windows on site, the window units on site somewhere so that they can be reused at some point in the future. Um, so there's just a couple of win windows on the first floor there um, that are that are proposed for removal to construct the addition. So here's the existing and proposed rear elevation. We'll have a new little entryway off to one side. And then these are the existing and propo proposed side elevations. So I've not noted any concerns except for I did kind of realize at the last minute that there was, it wasn't in the project description, so I missed it, but there were some window and some other windows that are proposed for replacement. So that I got clear on yesterday. On the side, on the south side elevation, there's also a little bump out that's got, um, it's got a window on each side on both floors. And the original windows are present on the first story. If you can see in the middle picture, the 12 light window, those are original. And then the upper story windows were all replaced at some point with windows that are not matching the ones at the bottom. So they're proposing to replace those three windows um, with new, new wood windows that will match the original ones. And then on the, on the picture on the right, the one window that's still kind of outstanding in question is that double hung window on the second story. That's also proposed for replacement. Um, to, I think it's original to the structure based on just my kind of what I could tell from looking at that window and the other windows in the house. And so I did talk with them about um, usually the commission or we require applicants to have a restoration specialist look at um, original windows that are proposed for replacement to make the determination of whether or not they can be repaired versus um, needing to be replaced. And so I did let the applicant know that that was on the table for discussion for today. Um, so just to make you FYI on that. And then the other thing I did just want to clarify, and I, I put some bubble diagrams on your plan set. I didn't include them in my slides, but um, just to kind of clarify that what windows we're talking about um, in the floor plans. And then also there's noted in the, in the elevation that, that the bottom left window, that big double hung window is noted in the plans to be replaced, but it's not actually going to be replaced. It will remain. So just to clarify on that. So That's I'm not- the diamond shaped window mm -hmm. on the upper sash? Oh, on the, on the bottom left. Oh yeah, the, in the upper sash, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I really am not noting any concerns with the exception of that one double hung window on the south side that we just don't know. There's some, uh, sorry, I should go back and point out to you that the applicant did send me some photos today of the interior of that window. And it does look like it's in pretty rough shape. I, I just, I, we don't know 100%. I'm not, a, I'm not an expert in restoration of windows, so I, I can't tell you the answer to that. So.
Do you all have any questions for me? Questions for Alan? On Exhibit B, the plans, um, when I'm looking at the Pretty much, it's not. It's it's getting bigger. Like it'll get longer, but it's yeah. coming off in the same place. Okay. I'm Mike Whitehead. I'm the owner of the house. Sorry, I should introduce myself. So. So the new kitchen get the footprint gets longer at oh, the new the kitchen back. towards right. the back. Right. Yeah. And it's. I mean, there. It's. It's a really big lot if you went back there, and so it's not really like. It's not going to be a substantial change, I don't think, in terms of like overpowering the site. And right now, it's just a bunch of broken up asphalt, or not asphalt, but concrete, and kind of, uh, you know, it's basically going to be built in that same already hard shaped <coughs> area. And then the bump out on the side, where the bathroom is going to be, is the same same footprint, just changing windows. Yeah, right. Or just the windows. Right, just the windows. Alex, did you feel like there was a lack of windows in the addition? The you know, I, I did consider that, but I don't, I think it actually is, is consistent with the rest of the house. If you look at the front mm -hmm. part of the house, the original part of the house, it's, Not it's, a lot of windows. yeah, it's kind of got that, that more blank span of wall too. So I, that wasn't to me in this application, something that necessarily stood out like it might normally, but, um, yeah, that's usually something that we point out, but I didn't this time based on just comparing the two. Am I reading the the sort of family entry cover as being standing scene? No, I did confirm that with Quinn, Mike's wife, that it will be asphalt shingle match to match the house. Other questions for Alex? I'd love to. Sure. Yeah. So here's all your, all the stuff that we've got that you've submitted. It's all been labeled differently, probably. Okay. <laughs> so just let me know if you need me to pull up anything, or we can just stay on the presentation, whatever. Yeah. So we we bought the house last October, and it's basically remained this this condition. Um, and unfortunately, it was a pretty poor addition on the back there that got hit with termites. dug into it and decided to tear it all down. Basically that kitchen and then above it was um, previous owner's studio. So there's paint everywhere in there. So uh, anyways, that's gonna come down and then we're gonna come back in with new foundation which should help kind of bolster the existing foundation of the house. Um, and then I think on the application it mentions we're gonna come back in with two new HVAC units, kind of in that corner there where the ladders are, um, to add central air to both levels. I'm sorry, can you just state your name for the record? I'm not sure the microphone yeah, sorry. caught it when you first were walking out. Mike Whitehead at 106 Cumberland Avenue. And you've got um, is this you're going to replace windows on that the side bump out where we've got the non-original windows yeah so these three windows yeah this whole bump out is not original to the house um, and these three windows are in really bad shape so we're going to replace them with casements um, and then we were hoping to replace this one if, if this delays the project then we'll just nix it from this phase. Um, Have you talked to a window a restorer yet? I, no one's come out yet, but yeah, okay. we've spoken to somebody. Okay. Yeah. Is the intent to remove the entire bump out, non-original bump out, and then rebuild? Not this bump out, but yes, the back bump out will be completely gone. Yep, this one.
correct. I don't know if we put the plans on. Do you mean the site plan? No, I was looking at uh, sheet A 2.1E. The dotted lines represent the demolition. You should run this all the time for us. You're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a mechanical engineer, so I, I do this right. on an uh -huh. industrial That's scale. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, so, and we haven't obviously started the demo process, so in all likelihood, this wall will get replaced, and then this wall is on the south side, um, will probably get replaced depending on the condition. And I can pull up the existing footprint if that would help too. This is the new plan. Yeah, would you go to sheet uh, A 2.1E? Yeah, I don't know if it's in this document or not. Oh, there we there go. There it is. See, it's graphically just maybe not quite. Yeah, so the footprint is, is bumping out. So that, this is the portion of the wall that might still remain depending on the condition. Are there actually windows in it, like what's drawn? That's oh, that's the upstairs. upstairs. That is upstairs, you are correct. There's the kitchen, yeah. sorry. Yes, the only window is this above the sink currently. I was just curious, it appears that that one wall will not be touched and remain. Yeah, exactly, depending on the condition. Yeah, so that is the extent of, of that south side of the house. Upper you mean level upstairs. Has mostly windows, but those are going to go away. Correct. And wall's going to go in its place. Correct. Either new wall or infilled openings with wall. Correct. Yeah. Most likely new wall, especially upstairs. Yeah. And we can correct that on the plan. If that's yeah, what I we think need it's to do. a little bit. Um, that's a little just what's to remain. Architecty. What's existing to remain? What's to be removed? Sure. How does that work, Alex, when they get out there and if there's more demolition required than what's shown? We haven't required construction drawings before in the past. I mean, it's just basically just based on how it's going to look appearance-wise from the exterior. Um, is there um, any sort of amendment that needs to happen if they get out there and realize that that whole wall just needs to go? No? I don't think I mean, so. I don't know that it's not going to have any original. impact on appearance, I don't think. We have, we've never required You just have too many architects in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think I understand why the question came up, but I, I think if maybe we were talking about a landmark or, or maybe yeah, yeah. a part of the building, maybe we would need to be 100% clear. But I think because this is an original part of the structure, anyways, that yeah. retaining that material wouldn't really matter. And we know what the new exterior wall right. would look like. So. so I guess my, you know, I think Alex, your. Um, your observations about that one original window that's um, proposed to be replaced. I do think the restoration feedback from someone that can look at the windows is going to be important. Um, you know, I think you could do that as a minor work later if it were to be taken out of this application or? Well, if, if it were taken out of this application and they have it assessed and it can be repaired, then obviously Yay. But if right. it has to then be replaced, then they would, would have, have to come, come back. back as a major work again. That's just logistics for your feedback in sure. terms of how to kind of navigate today and understand. Mm -hmm. um, Which I know is frustrating for one window, but right. we've, all, we've required an assessment for pretty much every window. Yeah. And the alternative route would be for a continuance today until you can get that feedback and then you would do it all as the, this application, including whatever the outcome of that evaluation is for that one window. And that would be in May? And that could be in May if you can get okay. the information by the, the deadline. Um, and he can come out and write a letter at some, you know, before the May meeting. That's if we were to take that window replacement out of the project, is that... 
I guess it's up to y'all, obviously. Well, <laughs> it, it really is up to you, but the big difference there is, uh, I would think would be you pay another application fee to do another major work application for that window once you, if it has to be replaced. If it doesn't have to be replaced, then it's just a repair, and that's not a major work application. So, um, if the outcome of the evaluation is that the recommendation is to replace it, and if you've taken it out of today, today could move forward and you could start the work that you're doing, provided we get a motion that, and an approval. <laughs> but then you would reapply with another major work application to take care of the window replacement in that one location. Understood. I think that's really the only thing that's kind of outstanding that makes a full motion today a little bit of a hurdle. We haven't ever done this before because I don't know that we've run into this exact situation before, but is there, I wonder if there's a way that we could write a condition, that we mm. write a condition that, you know, you know, um, evidence to support, you know, window replacement will be submitted to staff by a window restoration specialist, and then you can proceed so, I mean, so yeah, I don't know. Come back. I want to get Janice's take on this because if we write it into the CA request that they have approval to replace the window, then we can't necessarily take it out. Like, how is there a way we could? Well, if you condition it on only if that you get the approval from the restoration or the restoration specialist confirmed, otherwise you couldn't. I mean, you couldn't replace. It. If they if they don't confirm that it needs to be replaced, then you're just going to have to. But then you would have already had the approval if they contingent on that restoration letter saying that it needs to be. I mean, I'm okay with that if you are all are because yeah, you know that would save both the effort that we just described. Right, and it's yeah. not like tree removal where if the arborist report would come from any handful of people. There's only a couple of people who do restoration. We know restoration here, so you know we would know that it was a reliable source, I guess. Or I mean, I feel like it probably makes the most sense just to do it that way versus yeah. so having to come back right. and it'd be even mm -hmm. really yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's either a lot of effort to wait and get it all approved later or to reapply with one window is a lot, it seems like. All right, well, I'm going to pause for a moment and I'm going to open the floor for public comment. This is always the most riveting part. <laughs> Process. <laughs> There's lots of public comment. Uh, and seeing that, I'm going to close the floor for public comment. And I am um, interested in other comments or concerns or questions from the commissioners for this application. I don't really have concerns because it's on the back of the home and it's not original most of the work. Um, I think that um, the condition for the window sounds like a smart plan so that these folks can get on their way and start getting things done. Um, that's, that's pretty much all I've got. I paused visually on the side lights on the, I don't know, are there side lights on the front door? That's the, is that the, si the new side, side entrance? Yeah, but maybe that's the back and it doesn't matter and it's just the more light the better with the house with scant windows. Are you asking if there's side lights on the front door? No, there's just one light door. fixture on the. Oh, wait a second. Um, the, yeah, the. Oh, the windows. Oh, the side. We're I think we're talking about that new side Got door. It. Yeah. Got it. Door 101 on the front. Side. There are not there on the front. There's no, it's just a door. no yeah. transom, no nothing. It's just a door. Correct. Black. Let's see if I can try to zoom in. There oh, it is. There's a big bush there, so yeah. you probably <laughs> can't see it. You can't see the front door anymore. No. But it's just 
I don't think that's a, uh, or I don't see in the standards where that's um, affecting anybody. Towards the back, the back, not seeable from the main views. So my question is, we're writing it for the window to be replaced unless the independent person states that it's safe. I think we're writing it that it can be replaced contingent on okay. that evaluation. And so if the evaluation comes back and says it's, rest it's restorable, then that would be the route that, that, would, that things would go. Is someone ready for me to make a motion? I would be ready. Or more discussion? Madam Chair, based on uh, based upon the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, application, three pages, Exhibit B, plans and drawings, 12 pages, Exhibit C, photographs of subject property, six pages, Exhibit D, mechanical unit specification, 16 pages, Exhibit E, casement window specifications, 37 pages, Exhibit F, double hung window specifications, 40 pages, Exhibit G, back door specifications, 65 pages. Um, exhibit H, additional photos of site, four pages, received April 12th, 2023. And the commission's actual inspection and review of the subject property by all members accepting. I move that the commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following. One, that the application is to demolish existing two-story portion of rear elevation and construct new two-story, 282-square-foot addition with a nine-foot, nine-inch by six-foot covered entry with tapered wood support columns on rear elevation. New windows on addition would be Pella Reserve traditional wood, six over one, SDL double hung. A new entry door will be Pella wood multi-light with wood lights side lights, all materials including wood lap and uh, shake siding, wood trim and roofing will match existing exterior materials on house. Replace uh, one, um, replace one existing non-original multi-light window on the rear elevation. Oh wait, hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah. See where I am on number one? Yeah, I'm just trying to grab my staff report. So okay. Just seeing page. Sorry, did you did you start reading one? Yeah, I got to the uh, middle of the paragraph. Um, um, Existing non-original, I'll put my cursor there if you can see it. Sorry. Can you see it? I don't have access. Ex so I'm at uh, replace one existing non-original multi-light window after the semicolon.
replace three. Ready? Yep. Replace three uh, existing non original multi light windows on the south elevation with new Pella Reserve traditional 12 light wood casement windows. Install two new mechanical units. Sorry. As stated, or I should say it right. Um, I'm finding a, a, a casement window. In and then what did you say? And replace one existing. And replace one existing. Six over one double hung window. Six over one double hung window. Uh, original. Original. On south elevation. On south elevation. Install two new mechanical units screened with shrubs from the Monford recommended list adjacent to the south elevation. All work will be in accordance with the attached and approved drawings and plans. All permits, variances, or approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Did we talk about the inspection of the window? It's okay. This application does meet the uh, of that two that the standards for additions found on pages 88 through 89 and utilities and mechanical systems on pages 82 and 83 of the Montford Historic uh, District Design Review Standards adopted on April 14, 2010, and amended uh, December 9, 2019, were used to evaluate this request. Three, this application does meet the uh, design standards for the following reasons. The existing portion of structure to be demolished is on the rear elevation. New addition is cited as inconspicuously as possible on the rear elevation where historic character defining features will not be damaged, destroyed, or obscured. Addition is inset from the rear building corners so as to be differenti differentiated uh, from the existing building and to uh, reduce public visibility. Design of the new addition is compatible, compatible with uh, the existing structure and height, massing, roof <laughs> form, and pitch. E, uh, size and scale of new addition is limited and will not overpower the site or substantially alter the site's uh, proportion of built area to green space. F, windows and materials will match the existing structure. G, mechanical units will be located on side elevation and will be screened. Number five, that the actions and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the uh, special historic character of the Montford Historic District. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Based upon the foregoing uh, findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued with the following conditions. Uh, one, the original six over one wood window uh, replacement approval is contingent upon applicants submitting a conditions assessment by a historic window restoration specialist documenting that window cannot be repaired and must be replaced for staff uh, review prior to replacement. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is in Montford at 7 Rosewood Avenue. And we'll start with Alex's report. All right. Um, I'm going to try to move through this one fairly quickly. It's got a lot of pieces and parts to it, so I'm going to try to just cover the highlights. Um, so this is the structure that we'll be talking about for this project. Um, 
excited to see this house get a renovation project. It's a really cute little house, and it's kind of just gotten, was lost in a thicket of forest back there for a while, so they've cleaned out all the brush from the site, so now you can actually see it, see the house. Um, so um, I, there's a sandboard map in your or packet if you want to look at it, but um, one of the main things to talk about as far as the front elevation goes is the front porch, which is not original to the structure. If you look at the sandboard map, you can see that the original structure actually spanned the width of the structure. Um, we don't know when this current configuration was constructed, and it's in pretty bad shape. So they are proposing to replace all the um, flooring and the railing, um, the, all the structural supports and the, the roofing, um, as well as the lattice beneath the porch. So that's one thing that's part of uh, the scope of work. And then, um, as you can see, there were two sets of French doors that were added at some point where there were original window openings on the front elevations, and so those are gonna be restored, and I'll skip ahead a few slides to in a second to show you, but those are proposed to be restored to um, double hung windows. Um, and then the front door is also likely not original to the structure, it's being proposed to be replaced with a salvaged wood door that's also in your packet. Um, <clears throat> Here are just some photos really quickly of the other elevations. I'll probably move back and forth a little bit through my slides for this one. Um, this is existing and proposed front elevation on the top and then existing and proposed elevations on the bottom. And I should note too that we're talking about the primary structure, the accessory structure, and some site work um, as part of this project. So. Uh, the other main thing to note on this application is they are proposing to remove um, several win or a couple of windows and um, doors from the rear elevation and construct a, a new little one-story addition that's on the left um, for facing the rear and then a little screen porch that is, would be within like the L between the house and the new addition. It's, I mean, I'm sure you can probably see it if you zoom in on the plans, but there is a requirement that additions be inset um, from rear building corners. There's, there's not a dimension noted in the standards, though, um, and so uh, it, it's pretty close, but it is inset, so just to note there. And just to go back, in case it's helpful, you can see in the top right, the rear elevation. So they also are also removing that crawl space access from the back, too. And then I also included in my slides the existing and proposed side elevations. Um, the top is the south elevation, and bottom is north. No changes to any other windows and doors on the house. Um, the changes to the accessory structure, this is not, I don't know when this structure was built, but it's, the, there was an accessory structure shown on the sandboard map, but it was closer to the, to the street, and it was one story, so whatever that was is gone, and this was built at some point after that. Um, it, they are proposing to replace the, the non-original doors on this structure. There's one on the, um, easy to see on the left is the street, is the um, elevation that faces Hawthorne. And then behind that section of fencing is another metal awning that faces the back of the primary structure. So both doors are proposed for replacement as well as those beautiful metal awnings. They will be replaced with new little um, gable end coverings that are shown on the drawing. Um, and then there's a um, there's site plan and landscape plan. I didn't put the landscape plan in my um, my slideshow, but it's in your packet. Um, so there's an, um, I'll just move, I guess, probably from front yard to backyard. That's probably the most helpful thing. Um, Whoa, how did he zoom in so much? <laughs> Gotta get out of there. 
the, the, um, at the street level, I guess, is where I'm going to start. There is a set of steps there that come down from the yard, the little, it's a very shallow set of steps that are really in bad shape. So that's part of what is proposed as um, site work, is to replace those steps with um, snap stone. I could be wrong, but I don't, and maybe Avery could speak to this if we've looked at any minor work applications for snap stone in recent past. I don't know that I've reviewed any, but there's a photo, um, or we can, um, there's a photo in the representative site feature page if it's helpful. I can pull that up. Have you looked at any applications with snap stone? Okay. And that might just be my poor memory, so. <laughs> uh, so okay, here's the, uh, the photo I wanted to show you where you can see the stones that need to be replaced, or the steps that need to be replaced. And then they're also proposing a low stone, stack stone wall along that front property boundary. And they've already somewhat improved the, the gravel walkway from that up to the house. So there will be a, a stone walkway there, and then there will also be a new stone, too many things to look at, a new stone walkway that will go around the south elevation and connect into a new a little patio, stone patio area that's proposed back there. squinting, <laughs> try to make it bigger. <laughs> it is hard to see if you're not looking at, the, at it on your own device. Um, so the area that I was just describing, you see the walkway coming in and then there'll be a new patio area, so that will be a stone patio area um, in the side yard there. Um, I should note that there's some existing fencing and some non-original sheds that are being taken off the site um, and then they'll, they want to um, install some new fencing. Um, this is a corner lot because it's on, has two street frontages. So I did make sure to email with them today about the section of fence they're showing on the plan uh, along that stone wall um, along Hawthorne. It does need to be, uh, meet the standards for front yard fencing since it's uh, on a corner lot. Um, and so there is, I, they did submit some additional info to me. I was a little bit fuzzy on where exactly what fencing type was proposed because they've got six foot privacy fence and four foot um, picket fence. So I just want to make sure we have that um, clearly noted on the plan. So I did get uh, um, an updated site plan from them today that was just added to the folder. I just didn't have time to add it to my slideshow and we can look at that in a minute. Um, and they did confirm that this will be for Four foot tall. One question I do have about that, though, is that they sent, let me pull up the section drawing, and I know the landscape architect is here and can help help us get clear on this, but I just wanted to note that, um, that in the section drawing, it does look like this fence is going to be on top of the wall, which is what we've struggled with. <laughs> here lately about that, because this clearly is a fence and not a railing. So I think we need to sort through that and see if there's space to move it back, set it back from that wall. Um, <clears throat> I don't really have any concerns about wood picket fencing at this particular location. It's a pretty small yard, um, which is where the commission has tended to think that you know, front yard fences were most appropriate in the past versus, you know, like Montford Avenue where you've got these kind of big, deeper lots. Um, I think it also f fits with the architectural style of this house, um, picket fencing. Um, so essentially there'll be fencing along that southern property boundary. It will cut in, go along the, the driveway and then back along um, this trash enclosure and then there'll be um, privacy fencing in the rear yard that will um, then go up along the north property boundary and then if I can move it over let me pull up the other updated plan probably more helpful 
so you can see where in yellow the wood privacy fence along the north property boundary will then um, in beyond behind the front building corner um, as required or stipulated by the design standard so just to note that there's two different sections sorry there's three different sections of fence there's the four foot picket fence along Hawthorne and in the rear yard and that's fence. shown in green there right mm -hmm. and then the four foot there's four foot basically trash enclosure versus just maybe they're they've noted as privacy fence but trash and that's enclosure the purple. right the purple and then the yellow is all the six foot privacy fencing um, what else is helpful on to note to you on the site they are just adding some stone around the, the existing gravel parking area, um, improving, I think, the circulation between the two structures a bit, because um, right now it's kind of just a hodgepodge a little bit. Um, and so I think those were all the moving parts to this application. Um, I'm happy to answer questions or go back to any drawings. I realize I was jumping around a lot um, on this one. Questions for Alex? On the rear elevation, go ahead. Uh, one thing before I forget that I wanted to bring up is that they are proposing um, metal roofing on the new um, porch got a pretty um, low pitch roof and this house right now has both asphalt shingle and metal roofing on it I don't know when the metal roofing was put on but it was put on the dormers at some point I'm assuming because they're also very low pitch so just a note on that they did change the material roofing material on the new addition to match the asphalt shingle um, so it's really just a matter of, and, and also the front porch is proposed to also be replaced with metal, and it is metal now. Um, we did, I did confirm with the architect today, they, the original spec that was submitted for the standing seam roofing didn't meet the standards that are set forth in the design book, which are specific to be 18 inch panel coverage and one inch rib. So we got clear on that today, and they, um, so that we're, we're good on that. But I just wanted to note the metal roof as part of our discussion today. Sorry, Commissioner Hornaday, what was your question? On the rear elevation in the lower right, that window, sometimes I saw it being removed and sometimes I saw it being scooted up three inches. I'll, I'll let the architect, okay. oh no, it was being raised, I think, for the sill height for the countertop and the same kitchen. Same material. Right, same raised. roof, I mean, same window, just being moved for the for the interior because that's the kitchen so they're moving it for the countertop and height. I don't think it was very much. I, I want to say it was a few inches. When on the front steps are you recommended concrete to match the steps coming up into the from the curb steps that are stone now to match the ones going up to the front porch now or what is that I'm okay with stone because I think there's stone mm -hmm. now they're just falling apart okay they just need to be rebuilt I don't it's just hard to know what they really looked like originally you know and this and I guess you know I don't necessarily have an objection to snap stone it just looks very modular in a way but I don't know okay you know I, again I kind of I don't know that we've looked at that in, for a project in a front yard before. I could be wrong, but I won't try to do the mental math on how many major work applications I've looked at, but too many. <laughs> Don't, do <that. laughs> Don't do that. What else? You had asked about the lattice. Right. They did confirm that it will be painted square lattice. The railing is coming back down to a 30 no, it because it was already replaced it, to meet building code, it will have to be 36 inches, I believe, unless the height, I think that the porch height is tall enough to warrant that, but I'll let the architect answer that question.
that's in the side yard, you know? Right, and, and, and privacy fencing is allowed to go into a side yard. It just has to terminate at least a foot behind the front building plane, which we usually, that's not, not a porch, it's the front building plane, right? So it's noted on there to be one foot behind the facade. So, um, but no, that's a good question because it's definitely some, a detail we don't want to miss. I think one other question I have for Steve and me is the height of the little stacked stone wall behind the accessory structure. That might be the only other site detail. I'm not sure I'd, I was trying, it's a lot of loose ends to wrap up with every application today. <laughs> so people were <laughs> sending me stuff <laughs> left and right, so. The drawing you just showed, is there excavation to make that uh, stone wall or and fence on top? I believe so. I, that wasn't what I initially thought, but after seeing what they sent me today, that's sort of a question mark. So. Alex, on the rear elevation, the, the two smaller windows that are to be removed, are those original? I don't believe so. Okay. I believe that was in the project description, but I'll have to go back and double check. I was going to suggest that if they are original, perhaps they could be used on the two smaller sides of that new uh, bump out. Mm -hmm. See, they're showing single windows there similar to what was there before. Right. I'll let the architect answer that question for you because I, I, I feel like I would have caught that if they were, but mm -hmm. hopefully I didn't miss that detail. So it's kind of hard to see because it's got that that vinyl fencing around that one side of it. But basically, yes, they are. That's the scope of work for the elevation that's in the picture on the left, and then the same thing with the elevation that's on the right. It's got the same kind of. It's got a pedestrian door with that same aluminum roofing over it. You can kind of just barely see the aluminum over the fence on the left side of the fence. Um, the doors will be different. Like one will be maybe more of a like primary entrance door on the street facing elevation, and the the one on the side where the fences will be like a multi light French door. Oh, they were removing the AC unit too, so that window unit's getting replaced above that side door. That's a good question. I don't know. You know, how sometimes window units are are installed with just like sliding up part of the sash. Yeah. So it could be still the window still could they're be present. They're going to use a mini split. Yeah, the, the mini instead, split. So there won't be a window unit there. When they're deleting the window and a mini split's coming out. That's where the. They're they're not deleting the window. They're just the taking unit. out the window unit. Yeah. I mean the the mechanical exactly. unit up there. Yeah, and then installing a mini split. So, so that's a good question. We just need to verify what like if that window's. There's a lot of kinds of windows on that. Well, and that it probably shows that in the elevation, and I just wasn't thinking about that window, the mechanical unit that was being removed. So I'll, I'll double check that when I go back to sit down. And I'm sure that Sarah can speak to that. Do you want me to turn it over? To, uh, yeah, are there other questions for Alex? I think we're getting into applicant territory under these questions for sure. Uh, yeah, we can hear from the applicant. Stephen Lee, we'll need to swear you in first. Yes. Okay, you ready? I'm ready. Raise your right hand. <laughs> Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the information you present during the hearing for a certificate of appropriateness before the Historic Resources Commission shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank I you. do. Thank you. I'm Stephen Lee Johnson, uh, landscape architect with SiteWorks Studio. So I think there were two, maybe three questions. The first question was regarding the, uh, can I do an overhead? You went to the screen. Yeah, I'm going to take that for you. Mm -hmm. The 
first question, I think, was the stone wall that's behind the existing accessory structure. That is just being put in place in order to direct drainage. Right now, soil comes right at, like, basically finished floor elevation. So that stone wall is less than 18 inches tall. And it's just, there's going to be a French drain that goes along the back side of the building. And um, this is just creating a, a positive flow situation for stormwater. Um, so that's um, the wall that's being proposed there. And then the, um, the other question, I think, was regarding the, the terrace right here. The primary reasoning behind this was, again, existing stormwater drainage. Uh, the corner of the house right here, uh, soil is going, to, excuse me, right here, soil is going directly at um, the uh, floor elevation, and we've got to get positive flow around the house. So in order to do that and also create uh, what we think is this really nice terrace here, um, this wall that is shown is at its highest point. Uh, most of it is about 18 inches tall, and it tapers down to 12 inches. And again, we're just trying to minimize site disturbance, uh, minimize um, uh, disturbing the root zone with the existing hemlocks that are nearby, and then getting positive stormwater flow around the house. Um, the, I think there was a question maybe about the uh, proposed picket fence at the back of that wall. If I can address that, uh, again, this is just an 18-inch dry stack wall, and um, those are simple four-by-four four posts uh, set in a concrete footing. Everywhere on that previous plan, if you flip back one, yep. that has this green stone, I can't see that. Yeah. Uh, but that whole area, that's all going to ex excavate it? Uh, no, it's really just down? it's really just right in here. So this all fills level. This is all level. Uh, but basically, we're ha we're needing to, to send stormwater oh, out so this a, way. The top of the line there. Okay. So yeah. basically, from the street, you're not going to notice any kind of excavation either. You won't see any of that excavation. So, are you? Are there steps coming out of that? Uh, no. Headed to the back door? No. And um, do you mind if I? Can I borrow that if I can help you navigate it all? Just let me know. Can we go back to the hot Thank you. Um, so basically, there are some, a couple of steps that go up to so we can get up to the finished floor elevation, about 18 inches up. But this right here is all flat, basically, just enough to drain just enough to drain all the way around. This creates a level garden and terrace area right here. This is all level here. And then just a couple steps up to get into the door of the house. And so from the street side, you're really gonna just see the railing. Correct, from the street side, you'll just see the uh, picket fence. Picket fence. Yep. And that would be really. from right here, you'd see a four foot high. And with the plant, if you've seen the landscape plan too, there's also um, rhododendron and flowering shrubs planted on this side, the street side, just to kind of soften the uh, appearance of the fence from the street and give a little bit of privacy uh, for the owner. So I think that, unless you've got questions, I think that was, those were the site uh, questions that popped up. <coughs> Can I answer any further ones or that answer the questions? Okay, so uh, Sarah, the architect. Hello, I'm Ashley MacPhail. I'm the owner of the property. My architect, Sarah. Hi, I'm Sarah Howell with Ledger Gen Architecture. Um, so, I uh, one question that you asked, Will, is um, about the railing on the front of the house. Yeah. We are going to try for the 30 inch. Because I wasn't when I I think when our first meeting I wasn't aware that it could be that it was possible that it would be acceptable based on the historic precedent. So I'm, we're going to try for it. But it's only a two foot it's only a two foot high porch, so we might get pushback from the insurance company, but it's not required. It's not required by code. It shouldn't be. Okay. If it, I mean the the height of the porch is less than thirty inches, so. Um, we're gonna, so it will be, and it's in keeping with the style. I have a detail on the set that shows the, 
it's in keeping with the style of the, of the neighbor. Um, and then to answer your question, Emily, um, on the rear elevation, the those two windows are original. Are they? Okay. But the French doors are not. So um, all of the windows in the new addition are the exact same size as two of the three windows that are being either removed or adjusted on the rear elevation. So we could potentially reuse those windows. Um, if I can pull up elevation, I need the rear. And I have 3D views in your in your set. You can see the 3D images as well. But the folder is pulled up there too, Sarah. If you want to, would you rather navigate? Yeah. The oh, thank you. Everything's been relabeled, so if you need me to, what would that be under? Oh, okay, it's the plans and drawings no, here. The, the revised one. Revised right. plan, yeah. sure. Oh, that might be. Oh, I see. Just go. scroll down. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay, I'm just using the arrow. Sorry. <laughs> um. Oh gosh. If I, I can't go sideways, I can only go down. Okay. The renderings are at the at the very end of the set. I apologize. Um. This is a good spot to look at. So. You know, the, this this window here is the same size and the another one that we're that we are removing. So my thinking is that these two could be used in the addition. The third window that the the the, the larger window that we're removing is probably out of scale with the addition because the size of that primary bedroom is not it's 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 a small room and I think that that window would be too large. But let me just show you in the demolition elevation. Okay, so this so this is a larger window that we're removing. This these two are the same size and could potentially be reused, but we would have to switch. We'd have to this this one in the kitchen would either have to be new or we could try to put the larger window in the kitchen. That's just kind of shooting from the hip based on what you were suggesting. Yeah. Um, I think, um, Much original material as you can, you know, mm -hmm. wherever it makes sense to use it. Okay. And then um, in the past, we've recommended a uh, removed window that can't be reused, mm -hmm. just be left on site for, you know, posterity. Future. Yeah, future potential use. Okay. Okay. Um, are there other questions? I, I'll go to the, I'll put, pull up the 3D. Go to the front elevation. That one's fine. No, not that one. Oh. <laughs> well, oh, the uh, elevation of the addition? Well, uh, yeah, that one. So those, the new max of two windows that you're bringing in, mm. seem like they need to come, they need to be of the larger size on the front uh, part of the house. It might just kind of look a little floaty um, to match all the houses in Montford that have windows to the uh, to the uh, railing height. Right, that's what I was yeah. going to point out, that usually, like in historic houses, obviously they align with the, the and railing. And since it was historically height. a 30, uh, but the since window, you were gonna, they I thought you were going to do the 36-inch railing. Oh, I see. Yeah. Maybe like the height that would not be a problem seven. at all. There's there 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 are only two window sizes in the in this whole cottage, right, except for this right. one this one tiny Skinny. casement. Mm -hmm. So it would be no problem at all to change to this larger size, which is I think is type B, um, for the for all four of the furniture. Do, would you have an, any issue with that? Yeah, because those are all four new. Does that mean the one that's left over from the back could go to the front? Is that the size? Would that be yeah. weird? For, I was wondering that one orphan. They put one. Weird. Well, yeah, I guess it depends on how, how closely the other three would Which match it. would be nice, because then you don't, then you've reused all the existing windows. Because that's the size, I think. It right? is. There yeah. might be space to use those windows later in the backity bag. Uh, <laughs> the backity bag. The, 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 the carriage house. The carriage house. Yeah, that's, uh, a, great, that's a great idea. 
for mm -hmm. some part of it, just to store them. Like, I, yeah, I've well, got a suspicion that it would be really hard to make all four on the front like look exactly the same right. with one. I mean, because I mean, even, even if it's the same like profile when we look out, the glass is still going to look different. Yeah. I mean, it, I imagine it could be done. I, I think it would be cost prohibitive. And I don't, I, I mean, we're, we're specking a, a traditional wood window, but it's not custom at this time. Well, I mean, so that would it, would, it would be pretty difficult to pull that off, I would agree. And but I like, I like the, the idea of trying to use the carriage side. The new door, front door is nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that a beautiful door? Yeah, she found it. Mm -hmm. Were you asking about this? I get the 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 this window in the carriage house also has a um, a window unit in oh, it yes. now, and I think there's a sash. So when you take out the unit, we can lower the sash, or it might be it might have been taken out. The one next to it is just a plate of glass. So, oh. Uh, oh. Okay. There is a sash in there. No, the windows don't match. Mm, okay. Another day. Mm -hmm. um, other questions? Sarah, um, hmm. This is Stephen Lee Johnson again. Uh, the steps that are being proposed at the street were also brought up, and I wanted to make sure we address that. Um, so the snap stone crab orchard uh, is being proposed uh, for a couple reasons. One, um, um, Ashley liked the idea of not having mortar in the steps and just keeping it really natural looking. Uh, snap zone is also extremely safe because you can snap it at exactly six inches and it's a very safe way to do um, a stairway. So it is natural stone. Um, it's probably going to be about three feet wide and there's, you don't have to use mortar and it just kind of provides a, a natural feel. If that's something that um, Y'all would like for us to dress and propose something else? I'm sure we could do that. So, just a thought. And was your was your issue with the snap stone that you don't see it frequently on the front of houses in Montford? Because I have seen it in the in the rear of houses in Montford, Hockey. or in plants. Well, in my own personal house. I know. Too <laughs> <laughs> I don't I'm at Nine it. Pearson. I was here a year ago for my own work, and the snapstone yeah, passed with the flying colors. I don't remember that. But I, and now, now that we're talking about it, I seem to think, recall one other new construction project for a house on Pearson where there was the snapstone on the side in the side yard. I guess the. I'm not opposed good. to it at all. I just it's it's crab, of... crab orchard quarry stone, and it's 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 fairly common all over the city to use it um, and it's beautiful but I, I there's a picture yeah here yeah, do you have the picture if, if you could if you scroll, keep scrolling down I think it's on the next one it, I, I'm not sure if I have the landscape up it's there on the last couple of pages oh the land the land the site plans are at the end okay ah uh, yeah so it's here now, if I don't, if I do that, I think it's off to the right hand yeah, side a little bit. It's just yeah. right, right here. Mm -hmm. But it, as Stephen Lee said, that's we're, we're really flexible on if there's something that we think is more appropriate um, for that. Um, I also want to be crystal clear that the the current grading covers the floor assembly. So for, I mean, as, as it's graded on that south, um, I can show you in the 3D. Let me try to zoom back out. So right now, this corner of the house is, the, the dirt is in line with the, with the finished floor and the rim board is completely covered. So we had a really significant grading issue. And I think that Stephen Lee came up with a very graceful solution to just, because we need to drop the grade to a foot and a half below that finished floor height so that we prevent further water damage. And so we're gonna, and then we're just gonna try to 
keep it all at that level with a stone so the terrace. The slope going down to about 18 inches in the corner. The, the, the earth is sloping towards the house. Right. Like yeah, you, but so we're going to step, yeah, sorry. No. So it'll be graded so that it's the, at, the, at the corner of the house where it's now buried. We actually yeah. have to excavate a foot and a half. And then so we're, but then we're mitigating that grade, that transition with a stone terrace to a point and a retaining wall, but then, and then a slope. But there's never the a stepping down into this arena. It's just a gentle slope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And a gentle slope from the back. The street side, mm -hmm. that wall is holding the natural grade Awkward. consistent. Yeah, yeah. so from mm -hmm. Hawthorne, that wall's job is to keep the existing grade profile the same. So that when you're standing on Hawthorne, what you're going to see is kind of what you see now, with a little bit of the top of the stone peeking out and the picket on top, picket fence on top of it. So I think this sketch is really don't really help to show. So this is what you're seeing. This bicycle you can see in this fence, and then it drops down into this. Right. Area. But at the edges of that, it would go back to normal, and then to regular grade. So it sort of tapers its it way taper, back out. It would taper to zero, yeah. yeah. But then the fence is on top of the wall. The fence is on top of the wall. That it's, we haven't really got to yet. No. It's outward of the wall. Um, well, the standard, though, requires that it be outward of the wall by four feet. Mm. Um, and this is weird a little bit, Alex, because it's in reverse. It's backwards, right? Usually, we've, got, usually we've got the wall that we see and then the fence behind it four feet. Right. And in this case, four feet is weird because the fence would then be in front of the wall four feet. Mm -hmm. But the point of the step is to screen it. Yeah. But you're going to screen it from the wrong side yeah. if you do that. Is everyone following me? Yeah. Yes, but and I think it's a standard that maybe emotions. we need to rework. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's backwards. Yeah. Right? In this case, to you achieve the screening is to do what is being done. No, I know. I understand. Yeah. The intent is the opposite of what's happening here. Right. The intent of the standard is. Yeah, because there's no, there's going to be no wall to hide right. because it's under. Yeah, honestly, the, the purpose of the fence is because the owner has dogs and wants to keep them in. It's not even, it's not an aesthetic choice to try to conceal right. the wall in any way or anything that's happening. It's not a privacy choice. It's a, it's a, it's a function, choice. it's a functional choice. So right. if it and had to go, I mean, you could do an electric right. fence. I mean, there's other options. <laughs> I mean, it's not ideal, but I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, Pragmatic reason that and the wall is just 18 inches. Up. Is that right? Is that what? Um, it's two feet at the highest on the terrace side. So here on the but and then it tapers off. But you don't read it. You read it as zero from the right. street. From the street, it's a retaining wall, but it's right. just a stack stone retaining wall or boulder retaining wall. It's backwards. That's yeah. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. Make I sense. mean, I guess, it, but it just says retaining wall. We don't have them. But I agree, I think it is, like if you, let's say, if you we were talking about the front yard, for example, and they were building the wall where you could see the wall and then the fence on top of it, that's really what the guideline is trying to prevent. Address. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's, yeah, but in this case, we're, the wall's working in reverse. Mm -hmm. I think you just can make clear in your reasons why you, or why that, that however, whoever reads yeah. the motion wants to make <laughs> Well, and the intent. Because I think the intent is to allow for landscape screening to buffer the fence, and in this case, the if we if we fold that four foot thing, we're going to lose our real opportunity to screen it appropriately, which I think is the overall intent of the standard in the first place. I agree. Just I don't have a problem with the fence yeah. there. I just wanted to. That out. Right, so I'm just talking you all out yeah, for make sure that any you motion wrong. makers we might have. It is one of those days. It is one of those days. Just that. Right. All right.
that all makes so, much more sense to me now. So, I, and I'm struggling not with um, not with what's really proposed, but we've made some small little tweaks. <laughs> me too. Today, I'm struggling with so that. So I want to maybe <laughs> kind of go step by step through the little tweaks so that we are clear about um, if there's interest in a motion today. Um, and so I think site-wise, there doesn't really feel like tweaks that we haven't, that aren't reflected in the documents, right? Okay, so building-wise, and we start at the front, the tweak is um, really adjusting the size of those front windows that replace those two doors so that they have a better historical relationship to the railing height at the bot at the sill. So making those windows taller with the, and, and working towards getting a 30 inch railing. The B size. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so it would be this, these, it would be these, this size here in the same yes. room, wrapping the corner of that room. Yeah. Um, of the dining room. So. Oh wait, you know what? Okay, we're gonna do that and then we've got one more thing we have to do. All right, so then on the back, we're gonna reuse those two smaller windows in the new addition. So one of the windows is being raised You'll need to come up to the mic, sorry. One of the two windows on the back is being raised in place just to be able to just fit the counter under up. it. Okay. Uh, the, there's two windows that would need to be reused. One is the larger one, which we discussed might be difficult to do on the front of the house or cost prohibitive to match it exactly. The other is the smaller one, and we can absolutely reuse that okay. one in addition. So we're going to scooch one in place, and yes. we're going to re reinstall the other smaller the one, one in the new addition. Yes. And then the on the Hawthorne facing yeah, yeah, good call. Okay. On the extra yeah. side. That's and the, the, and it's, all, it's all alone, so that it'll be less yeah. conspicuous, but it'll be slightly different than the others, but it's all alone. It's this one here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you can see in, in 3D better that it's all it's separate from the others. And then we can see that other taller window is on site or, you know, moving somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So I think it's this when win this window right here that we could yes we could use it there. The okay. okay. So is that all of the little tweaking we did today? We haven't really talked about the, any tweaking of the accessory structure. Did, um, is um is the metal roof already included in the motion, or is the spacing and grouping on the metal roof something that needs to be? Included? It's already okay. it's already mentioned. And we're comfortable, I mean, I think uh, we're comfortable with the metal roof. We've already got precedent on site that there's metal roof there. Mm -hmm. uh, any Is other? anybody else having an issue with Crepo? Mm -hmm. Having an issue? Oh, I'm, I'm clear into the web folder at this point because I've lost my path. <laughs> if you go back to the left, on the left hand side, go to share with me. Okay. And then you can Let's try to. Yeah, other I. Other I no, They're I know. just. Um, we got lost over here too, and have to get Avery to help us. <laughs> well, it, th there's a significant delay when you click on the folder right. to wait yeah. for the stuff to show up. Is the problem? Yeah, I wonder if we should try to. Uh, yeah. Talk to Dan about My lack of patience is yeah, causing it to be worse. It goes, but it does a better job. I know. I just. Maybe potentially one other question uh, regarding the site plan for the very front of, of the lot. There's future low dry stack stone wall. Oh, right. I know in previous projects we've had discussion about putting a wall where there isn't a wall. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we should just probably address that and see if anyone has concerns. Good question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Stephen, you can I know we've had that this is in the spot. past, but that it is. I feel like that got resolved. Like the last mm -hmm. time we had one, there was, it was like how do you do it? 
I remember like trying to ask people to like find if there was a wall there before. Yeah. yeah. It was, well, it was like on one side, but not on the other side. I think we had we had one on Montford Avenue and then one on Pearson, the one that the big house that got rehab. Missing pieces of wall or there. Was so, okay. this is Stephen Lee again. The photo, uh, I, uh, photo number two, low stone wall is actually uh, right beside this property, and there's not a stone wall in front of this property because um, there's just not one. There needs to be one. It's a vertical cut on the corner, and it's just yeah. lack there's of funds, I guess. Interesting landscape at the moment. Yeah. yeah. But this is proposed in an effort just to stabilize the site at the back of the curve. And to extend the adjacent. Curve. Right. And the decision was made to propose this so that it does unify that. This is um, this dry stack with some small stone instead of reintroducing it, a whole different stone and pattern right there. Could we pull up the photograph showing the front of the current yard? I can try. Okay. Just so that's back in the, in the folder. Oh gosh. Where did I go? Now I went to a totally Yeah, different. I would say today it's just a thing. Sorry. There we go. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I wish that we had just stepped back a little further because you could see the neighbor's dry stack stone wall and it looks like it wants to continue again. Like it breaks into curves for the driveway and it's not there on the other side. And so I think that's what we're trying to, we're just trying to get continuity, continuity along that streetscape with the so, same wall. So that'll be kind of right along that front curve, like mm -hmm. straight up from the street. And just as low as it can be, to retain, like, you know, to control the grade right there. But it doesn't need to be more than, I think you said 30 inches max in your note. But it might be even lower than that. Just to go back to what you were saying, Vice Chair Spring, I, it was my recollection that we really did just like, hide it. like we just, everyone just agreed that it, there wasn't an issue with putting walls where there had, where we didn't know if their wall had existed there historically. I mean, that, that's not to say that you all can't have a different Opinion given the situation, but as long as it's not like vastly changing the, the you know landscape, right? If you're not regrading, you know, just to build a wall, right? Um, um, other questions. I'm going to pause for a brief moment for the um, public comment. Open the floor for public comment. Hello. Close the floor for public comment. It's a very nice palette in there. Yeah, there's a, there's a palette. A new palette. Um, I'm closing the floor for public comment. Uh, commissioners, is there further discussion? Um, questions? Were we in a group? The retaining wall and the four foot setback, was that a kind of I think, I, yeah, I think that um, from my perspective, if the intent of the standard is to require the setback so that landscape and screening can be provided at the fence, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna break the intent if we start to Space hold it. that four foot spacing because the wall is working in reverse of what we normally see, where from the street oh, that's side. that's right, there's rhododendron. Yeah, right. so we are screening and meeting the intent of the standards with regards to fencing on front yards. I, I would but just add to that, like if you think about it in reverse, like if we were talking about putting a new wall here with the fence on top of it, you're talking about like adding more of a visual boundary on top mm -hmm. of a visual boundary, right? Whereas, like from the streetscape, I guess, from right. the street versus with this particular situation, it's the opposite, so. Right, because the visual boundary is from the house private side and not from the street side in the case of our terrace wall on the on Hawthorne, where the fence is. Because from, from the street, you'll see no wall to screen. Right. And, the, and there is room now to start screening the fence, but we would actually have to pull that fence four feet closer to the street. Good. Which other questions? Yeah. We, 
feel comfortable with the changes. I think one of the conditions is going to be just to follow up with some revised drawings that reflect the changes that we describe in here, if we are comfortable with the motion Was today. there a sample of the doors for the ADU? Uh, yeah, there's some pretty extensive specs in Alex there. Are Alex, are you missing anything else? No, that you need? Okay. I'm good. Do I need to pull it up? If the, yeah. What, so were we just, do, you, do we just need the revised front elevation showing the difference? And the sides where we're going to re relocate that existing original window. I, I made notes on four sheets because two of them on the demolition elevations and demolition mm -hmm. plans will say to relocate okay. and store mm -hmm. as opposed to demo and then mm -hmm. and then we'll show them and then uh, yeah and then on the front elevation will be two larger windows okay. four larger windows yeah. okay okay Just Last chance. <laughs> madam chair Based upon the evidence presented to this commission, including Exhibit A, Application and Project Description, three pages, Exhibit B, Plans and Drawings, 17 pages, Exhibit C, Photographs of Subject Property, 17 pages, Exhibit D, Manufacturer Specifications, 12 pages, Exhibit E, Sanborn Fire Insurance Map, Exhibit F, Revised Plans, 17 pages, received March 31st, 2023, Exhibit G, Mechanical Unit Specifications, 23 pages, received March 31st, 2023, Exhibit H, Rear Entry Door Specifications, four pages, received April 12, 2023. Exhibit I, Wall Example Photos, 10 pages, received April 12, 2023. Exhibit J, Additional Site Documents, two pages, received April 12, 2023. Exhibit, is there an Exhibit K? No. And, um, let me, sorry, um, we're zoning out a little bit. Let me go back and make sure. There was nothing else shown that we didn't already have. About the, that, the color fence plan is that new, different? No, that was added. That's um, exhibit J. Okay. okay. You guys didn't show anything today that we had already. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. So we got everything. And the commission's actual inspection and review of subject property that all members accept. I move that this commission approve the certificate of appropriateness based on the following: one, that the application is to a primary structure. Rebuild existing non-original front porch and same footprint with new wood tongue and groove flooring, railings, posts, decorative rafters, and trim. Ex existing metal roofing on porch will be replaced with new standing seam metal roofing and weathered zinc color. Finished floor of newly constructed porch will be set slightly lower than the current configuration to prevent future water damage. New square painted wood lattice will be installed to beneath porch. Replace non original French doors on front elevation with new wood Marvin 6 over 1 TDL double hung windows. Replace non-original primary entry door on front elevation with salvaged three light wood door. Remove two existing windows, one pair of non-French original doors, and concrete and wood crawl space doors from rear elevation. Uh, should I mention now that that window is to be reused? Um, so I, I just read that the two existing windows on the back will be um, will be removed. It, oh, it's down lower. Sorry, it's I she added it, but it's it down towards the oh, okay. here. Okay, cool. Um, and construct new one-story, 255 square foot addition with new wood Marvin six over one TDL double hung windows and exterior siding and roofing materials matching existing house. Construct new one-story, 200 square foot screened porch with wood support members and standing seam metal roof in weathered zinc color. Porch will have a wood landing, stair and railing matching front porch. One existing wood window being removed from rear elevation will be reused on addition. Install one new multi-light wood door on rear elevation within new porch. Reinstall one existing window on rear elevation at new sill height. Install two new mechanical units adjacent to north elevation. B, accessory structure. Replace two existing non-original entry doors with one new wood craftsman style six light and one multi-light wood door. Replace vinyl awnings with new low pitch gable and roof coverings with asphalt shingles and wood brackets over entryways. Remove existing window mechanical unit and install new mechanical unit adjacent to rear elevation. 
C, site work. Remove vinyl fencing and two non-original sheds from rear yard. Remove one dead 15-inch DBH cherry tree from front yard. Repair area of gravel, parking, and walkway connecting to accessory structure and install new stone border around parking area. Regrade area adjacent to rear elevation to correct drainage and prevent additional water damage to foundation. Install French drain adjacent to west elevation of accessory structure. Construct stack stone walls adjacent to western, southern, and eastern property boundaries. Replace existing deteriorated stone steps connecting to sidewalk with new snapped stone steps. Install a new three and a half foot wide gravel walkway from street to front entry and along south elevation to connect to rear yard. Install new gravel walkway and rear yard to connect from parking area to rear elevation of primary structure. Construct 300 square foot stone terrace and new five and a half foot wide stone walkway inside and rear yard adjacent to south elevation of primary structure. Install six foot tall wood privacy fencing in rear and side yard along north elevation and four foot tall painted wood picket fencing along southern property boundary. Install four foot tall wood trash enclosure in rear yard. Shrubs and trees will be planted throughout the site. All work will be in accordance with attached and approved drawings and plans. All permits, variances, and or approvals as required by law must be obtained before work may commence. Two, that the standards for porches, entrances, and balconies found on pages 72 to 73, windows and doors on pages 84 to 85, additions on pages 88 to 89, roofs on pages 74 to 75, carriage houses, garages, and accessory structures on pages 34 to 35, landscaping and trees on pages 40 to 41, walkways, driveways, and off-street parking on pages 50 to 51, utilities and mechanical systems on pages 82 to 83, and fences and walls on pages 36 to 37, adopted on April 14th, 2010, and amended December 9th, 2019, were used to evaluate this request. Three, this application does meet the design standards for the following reasons. A, existing front porch is not original to the structure. Newly constructed porch will be compatible with the historic character of the building in height, proportion, roof, shape, metal, uh, material, texture, scale, detail, and color. B, new porch will be on rear elevation and compatible with the existing structure in terms of roof form, scale, details, materials, and color. C, doors and windows being replaced are not original to the structures. New windows and doors will be wood and compatible with the original openings and historic character of the buildings. D, new addition in is site, new addition is cited inconspicuously on the rear elevation where historic character defining features will not be damaged, destroyed, or obscured. E, addition is inset from the rear building corners and is designed so as to be compatible with the existing building in height, massing, roof form, and pitch. F, size and scale of new addition is limited and will not overpower the site or su sustainability, sustain, substantially alter the site's proportion of built area to green space. G, windows and materials will match the existing structure. H, non-original roof coverings on accessory structure will be replaced with new coverings more compatible with the historic character of the structure. I, new walkways and paved area will be compatible with the site and district in terms of dimension, configuration, materials, color, and texture. J, new fences and walls are designed to be in keeping with the historic character of the neighborhood and architectural style of the house. K, new fences and walls are cited in locations that are compatible with the traditional relationship of fences and walls to historic properties in the district. Four, that the action and improvements proposed in the application before us for a certificate of appropriateness are congruous with the special historic character of the Montford Historic District. I'm sorry, before you go on, did you, in one of your reasons, did we address the retaining wall and the fence? We did not. I mean, it was more general, oh, but I thought you were, yeah. I thought you were gonna call it out and say the, where the retaining off wall and the fence is, is Oh. It, it's not viewed from yeah. the, you know, it, it's not visible, mm -hmm. so it's not. I think you could say that the retaining wall is interior to the site and will not be visible from yeah. the public way. That would be under J. Is that J already there? Yeah. And, and then say, which is why the fence is, it's, it's not incompatible with that. Right. Okay. So I guess. Um, the wall is interior to the site, not visible, but the fence is screened fence is with screened landscaping. landscaping. Okay. The fence so is above the retaining. Yeah. 
is a fence, but the fe you, I guess state what it is. So the fence is above the retaining wall, but the retaining wall is interior to the site, not visible from the street, from the street. and the fence and will the be fence screened. screened with landscaping. Okay. So how do I add this into uh, number three? Uh, I, I think it's either a new final condition or you can add on, I guess, to, well, I think it's probably it's confusing a, to add on to the one where it's general walls and fences that you mentioned. Okay. Um, Maybe just new fences and walls are designed to be in keeping with the historic character of the neighborhood and architectural style of the house. Additionally, the proposed fence and retaining wall are the, the proposed retaining wall will not be visible from the street view, and the fence will be screened by, by with plantings. Okay. There you Next go. Time. Go out strong. <laughs> Improvise. Prize of the day. Do, we, do I need to read this part again? Did we read it already? Yes. Yeah. All right, so we're ready for a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Based upon the foregoing findings and for the reasons set forth therein, I move that a certificate of appropriateness be issued with the following conditions. One, existing original window being removed from rear elevation will be retained and preserved on site. Two, revised elevation drawings will be submitted to staff for review and approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? needing a break, which I think is fine. We've got basic, we've got one more hearing. It's, we, it's pretty straightforward. Pretty straightforward. Excellent. Okay, 246 Cumberland Avenue. Let's do it. Sorry, I lost, lost my presentation in the shuffle. There's been a lot of shuffling. <laughs> Today's one of those days where I miss our old system. It really was easy to just, just move paper, the papers around. Paper but yes. Okay. We are saving trees at least. This is true. I don't have any of you been with us long enough to remember when we used to send out the packets in the mail? Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I might be just us two. Every month we would get the big manila envelope in the mail. Yeah. We spent a lot on postage. <laughs> right? Um, okay, so the last item is for an after-the-fact request um, for a, some also walls. Spend some more time talking about walls today. Um, this is the front elevation just for context. The address is 246 Cumberland Avenue. Um, this is right at the intersection where it's kind of funky. It's like so where SoCo comes in the Cumberland. Um, so this um, the site work that you see here in these plans was approved in 2018 as part of a, a renovation project. Um, they got approval to build a new addition on the back of the house as well as, there were a bunch of different applications for this property. So I think that the site work was separate from the addition, but they got approval to construct a swimming pool in the rear yard, which was a lot of a roundabout of swimming pools philosophically in Montford, um, or the historic appropriateness of them. And then also this initially started out as being very ornately designed, um, kind of pool complex, if you will. So they definitely toned it down. So still to me, when I go visit it, it seems like it's definitely one of the most built out spaces I've seen in, in the landscape in Montford. But in any case, as part of that approval for the pool, they had to do fencing around the pool for building code. And so they got approval to build some low brick walls around the pool itself. And then there was also approval to build the fence, which was a metal picket fence um, that was five feet tall. Um, 
the property changed hands and then the uh, fencing was removed and replaced with brick brick walls, not retaining walls. They're not retaining while they're just freestanding walls. So on the, t on the left, it's kind of hard to see unless you zoom in on the plans in your packet, but you can see underneath where the red dots are, that's all was previously approved as metal picket fence and then went all the way around the um, north side of the pool. And so you see on the red line on the right hand side, that's where the, the fence was replaced with the brick wall. Um, and so this is the, this is the, I think I got pulled this off the Zillow listing on the left is what it looked like before when the fence was there. And this is looking the other direction on the top right of the walls that were constructed immediately around the pool deck. Um, and then down on the bottom right is the, actually the paper material that was approved for the pool decking. So it was constructed, so the previous owner that got approval for all of this constructed the pool decking with a different material than what was approved and then fast forward to the current owner replaced the fencing without getting approval with brick wall. So those are the two pieces that we need to talk through today. I brought up the kind of unusualness of reviewing swimming pools in Montford to begin with because it we had a sort of a, a few of them at once where it became all of a sudden super popular and people wanted to, to propose it and it wasn't easy to get through and, and this one in particular I think really the approval was tied I guess the formality of it was tied more back towards the formality of this house in a way um, I still have a little bit of <laughs> a heartburn about it in a way not the pool necessarily it just this one in particular the other one that I can think of the first one that got approved was like very minimalistic and within the site and it really didn't kind of bring it to call a lot of attention to itself whereas I think this sort of reads as more of like an outdoor built area and so I asked I met with um, the applicant's attorney is here to representing them and I met with him on site yesterday to talk about the walls and um, I, I'm not sure that there's any other context that we could look to as a point of reference in Montford. There are so many stone walls that that tends to be where my brain has focused. I don't know, I don't have any great examples in my mind of brick walls and so I asked them to send any along if they had any. So there are some photos in your packet that were sent along today, and most of them are stone though, so um, I, I thought maybe we would see some more brick walls. So I'll let Derek speak to you about, about that. But um, I, I'm just struggling with this one a little bit. I don't know how compatible the walls are really, and the fencing definitely creates less of a visual barrier within the landscape than walls surrounding the pool. On the flip side, the walls do make the pool less visible probably from the from the neighboring properties than the fencing That's did. It also the you know it's now all of the landscaping has matured around it enough to where it really if you go back there it doesn't feel so overwhelming to the site um, and to the neighboring properties but That never happened because it was in the approved CA for before. For the fence, yeah. I didn't get any photos of that, so I'll let Derek. Well, the Zillow doesn't show like the thing because it was green dot, green dot, green dot. Oh, oh right. I, um, here. On the lateral, on the uh, side. On yeah, the yeah. I mean, I, I would assume that yeah. they probably didn't go to the trouble of removing a bunch of landscaping just to build those walls, but. I, I don't. I can't verify whether exactly what was approved landscaping-wise was was um, in fact installed and then is still there. Well, in the original site plan, at the back there wasn't much proposed landscaping. 
the no, side, but I think that's still fence. Am I right, Alex? This that the top of the plan? Yeah, it was in that proposal. No, the original, it's in the original not. Proposal, it was fence with greenery outside. Of it. Right. right, but so that's the but top fence. It's if all go back to the side plan. It's all wall now. It's now all all of the metal fencing is wall. Correct. Is still fence. I'll let you yeah. come up and introduce yourself. Okay. You'll need to state your name. Sure. My name is Derek Allen. I'm an attorney. Um, I've got my friend and neighbor, uh, Kristen Barr, here. Um, I've been in and around Montfort since 1988. I've lived at uh, 7 Montfort Park Place and 16 Cortland and 201 Cumberland. I currently live at 133 Montfort, so I was very pleased to see the the one that's at 106 Cumberland that came through tonight uh, on the corner there uh, get approved because they've done a, a great job and it's uh, it looks awesome. Um, this particular property, to answer your immediate question, uh, that back wall, about half of it's taken up by the existing um, and uh, previously approved metal gate, um, and that's the highest point of that back part, and so uh, that takes up about half of it and on either side is, is brick wall. Um, there is some retaining function uh, as part of the wall. Uh, the property that is uh, closer to the nine mile section is, is much higher. And that's really the only property that can see this back pool area. Uh, you can't see the back, the back pool area from the roadway. You can't see it from the other adjoining property because it sits down in a bowl. Um, and so on either side, everything kind of sits down. Um, in terms of the pool and the pavers and what was approved before, uh, Chris purchased it and he purchased those issues and they were like that. Um, and when he came in, really the only thing that's changed is he's taken um, a kind of cheap looking aluminum black fence uh, that when bears come over, they crush it. If you live in Montford, you understand um, the fences get crushed if they're not made a certain way. I've got a Montford fence and so I replace it, you know, probably twice a year where they come in and come back out. Mm -hmm. um, but they replaced uh, the, the cheap looking aluminum uh, fence that had been approved uh, with a, uh, a brick wall fence that goes around that matches the house, uh, it matches the pavers, it matches the existing low retaining walls, it's the exact same uh, brick materials, the exact same architecture, it's even the same width. Um, if you went back there and, and tried to play what's, what's original and what's not, uh, you would point to the brick and not the existing um, uh, black aluminum fence that's up at the top by the driveway. <laughs> well, if they want to get in the swimming pool, they're going to get in the swimming pool. He doesn't want to have to replace the fence. Yeah. <laughs> was the landscaping taken out that was there? We haven't taken out any landscaping. The, the so I imagine because it's been like a decent amount of years, so they could probably go and. Yeah. But it, it'd, be, it'd be nice to see to be able to see a picture from the outside. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go see this one myself, but. Um, from outside of mm -hmm. the property, how much of the wall is showing, how much is screened by plants? Well, and on the, the site plan that's shown, the top portion was proposed to be pretty well landscaped. Mm -hmm. I can't tell in the drawing or the photographs if that landscaping exists. Yeah, is that? Right, so that would be this wall right here in the photograph that I'm looking at on my screen. And you can't see to know if that landscaping was ever installed. I mean, it seems a worthwhile question I mean, are to you, know are if Are you it, okay with the wall as a landscape? I, I mean, I don't know. I we so. could verify that later, and yeah. if not, we can Well, and I guess it, part of it is, is that there's certainly some departures from what was approved. Was there at the time and now, and you know, I, so it's hard. It's, it's just, What's the highest point in the wall? Um, is it higher than four feet. Or it, it's, five and a half? Yeah, it's the, it's the exact same height all the way around as the fence that was approved. Does it not stagger down? It, it staggers like, down because of the the grade of the of the property because it's. Fence, so the fence did mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it matched to the profile. Yep. Sorry, I can get back to the profile. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's what I mean. 
So it's, and it continues to rise to the right on this upper right photo. Right, because the, because the yard. Slope. Slopes down, yep. And did, well, I didn't see in the last, uh, uh, this afternoon if other pictures were sent. Was there another six foot wall that said sample zone? Um, no, what I did uh, do is simply literally walk around the, the block uh, from my house down to uh, Chris's house and, and take pictures of uh, walls that were made of brick to show that that is a, a structure that is all around. Uh, it's, um, some, some are. I mean, we can, you want to throw this thing on? We can show this. Yeah, sorry. I, I added your photos, but I don't know where they That's okay. went. I can flip through here old school. Um, I guess guy on. This is one that's right behind my house um, on Chestnut. And uh, this is just to show the, the placement of uh, the corner of Chestnut and Cumberland, uh, to show walls that are not automatically approved that were to have either had to come here to get approved or were uh, you know, built without approvals. Uh, that's the other side of uh, that same intersection at uh, Chestnut and Cumberland, and that's been around forever. This is closer down the street going towards uh, Chris's house, also on Cumberland on the left, going towards uh, the park. This is right across the street. This is Sean Perry's house. This is right across uh, Mr. Dunbar's house at that weird intersection. This is, uh, if you've been to Montford uh, during Halloween, this is the big Halloween house. Uh, this is Black Walnut over on uh, Montford Avenue. And again, these are just styles of, of walls and fences that aren't automatically approved that are just in a, I mean, I didn't even try to go find these things. Yeah. Um, and here's the one over on, uh, I think this one's over on Pearson with the pool in the back. I think <laughs> so, a lot uh, of these were pre-existing. Yeah. Um, some of them were. Uh, this, yeah, this one would not have been, um, certainly that one probably was. Uh, this one probably was not. Um, not sure about this one, and this one is brand new. Um, the one at uh, Cumberland and, um, and Chestnut. I know it matches that wall that runs up towards, uh, towards Tall John's, um, but it's, it, it's a lot. Um, and the point here for, for us, I think, is um, if we could go back in time, we've talked about this, he would have applied before he did it. And the, the rationale would be um, the only reason that this black aluminum fence was put in was because of cost. If they would have had the cost and the budget to do it, they would have put in this brick wall because it simply looks a whole lot better. Well, to be clear, it was put in because that's what was approved. And that, but, and that's, but that's what's, what was applied for. And so anyway, the, the point I was going right. to say is... The context it, there, though, would have been in order for brick to have been put in before, cost was not the decider. This board and the approval process would have been the decider. So we would have had the same conversation in 2018 had brick been proposed as to whether or not it's congruous with the neighborhood. So That's right. It wasn't a cost-driven solution. It was what was proposed and what the, the board accepted. Let me back up. The proposal was cost-driven, not the approval. I would just say, too, I think maybe what we're just to get quickly at our issue here is walls are allowed to be brick in Montford for the standards don't see them very often because I think from your photos right you go around right. there's most only of them one are that you showed us that's actually brick and so I guess we're just trying to figure out in this context is it appropriate right. and, it, and it and it's I think it's complicated by the fact that the whole pool felt like a complex in the first place and so part of that approval was to try to minimize mm -hmm. the impact of that yes. built space in the landscape so I think that's maybe where the Maybe the sameness of the brick surface, the brick walls, versus what was approved, which was, I'm sure, heavily negotiated for many minutes, um, kind of got to a point where that's there for insurance purposes, the fence. Um, wasn't there for, and then the privacy part of it was, I assume, was the uh, screening, and then 
change that on top of the uh, surface being different than what was in Ruby. Kind of puts us in a funny spot to now look at an anomaly in the historic district that was, um, I feel bad about the previous commission working so hard on that and then um, um, just kind of ignoring how, how the process that we've got to this point. That's where I'm sort of struggling. I agree it's better, it won't crash as well. And, um, anyway, that's where I'm you know, I think one of the challenges with swimming pools in Montford that we debate every time is their impact in the landscape. And the part of what's appealing about the metal fence is that there was sort of a visual transparency back there that made it feel less sort of structural, right? We've had some other examples of pretty significant site impact with retaining walls and flattening things and terracing things stone paving everything and um, and it sort of works against the natural landscape in ways that I think the fencing and its transparency helps give you sort of a visual continuity of an existing landscape and a wall doesn't do that in the same way. Now if I rem remember and I'm a little bit like you Alex six years of applications they all sort of run together after a while. <laughs> There's some memorable moments but some of what um, helped the commission wrestle with whether or not a swimming pool should be in Montford in the first place was the, the low um, sort of visual access from the public to this particular lot in this yard in the first place and that was one of the things that I think that commission um, sort of helped them Yeah, and um, you know, optically, this pool area is below yeah. the the road grade. You go up the driveway and then back down, yeah. and in the pools down there. And so when you're you're standing on the pool deck, you're looking back up towards where where the road is. You can't see the wall from the street. You can't until you get up that hill. The pool surprises you that it's even there. Um, and and that that was the reaction but as yeah, folks came in. Lot. So remotely visible to see. Right, that's I think it's where, a slippery slope. Right, just to approve it because it's already built, or to approve it, you know, without anchoring it back to the standards and being able to um, differentiate it and not really be precedent setting in a way that is hard on future commissions and future project well, requests. It's almost like you have to look at it as a brand new project right, right. Yeah. well and, and and i've gone through and, and done that exercise um you know using the guidelines or fences and walls at page 37 and, and i think it matches up very nicely in terms of being able to look at it on its, as a standalone project so that as, as other ones come on you don't have that feeling of oh we granted this over on on cumberland we should grant it for the next one i think that you're able to distinguish based off of of these facts and part of it is tied back to the fact that uh, the pool is already approved. Uh, the pool is already approved. The deck was already approved. The decking materials, I'm not sure how much that matters. I, I, I do get well, that, certainly. But we inherited that piece of it, so it's not, you know, that, that's what we inherited. But if you look at the, the first one on page 37, uh, re retain and preserve historic fences and walls that contribute to the overall historic character of a building or site. Well, we're not replacing any historic fence or wall. Uh, it's a previously existing fence that was approved and they've um, replaced that with materials that match the house, match the architecture, and we do have precedents um, inside Montford uh, in terms of the, the style of materials. Uh, number two and number three are uh, in that same piece of retaining and replacing, so, you know, that, that's kind of that first standard. Um, Number four, site new fences or walls in locations that are compatible. So let's talk about the location with traditional historic relationship of fences and walls to historic properties in the district. This wall is in the exact same location as the fencing. It's the exact same height as the fencing that was approved with the previous certificate of appropriateness. 
Um, acceptable materials for all fences include and goes through these pieces. Uh, one of those is brick. The project wall is brick and matches the brick exterior of the re residence. And it's very apparent, and that's one of the things that Alex talked about when you're standing on that pool deck, you see that this brick is the exact same as, as what's on that foundation of, of the home. Um, number six is about wire fencing, so that one's not applicable. Uh, fences in front yards or side yards of a corner lot should not exceed four feet. This one's in the rear yard, uh, and everyone agrees you can't, you, you can't even see it. Um, when folks were uh, curious about this project, Chris was talking about people would walk up your, your driveway because that's what people tend to do in, in Monford. When you see that, that little sign we all see, and they were surprised that there's a pool back there. Um, that's how screened it is from, from the road. Number eight is, de is dealing with corner lots. It's not a corner lot. Um, fences in the front yard should not be allowed. This is number nine on top of retaining walls. We just saw that in the last project. Um, this wall is located entirely in the rear yard of the residence. Uh, rear yard fences may be up to six feet in height and up to 100% solid. Um, of course, this is solid. Uh, it's not six feet um, and it's in the rear yard. Um, it's stepped to the existing, existing grade. Uh, the highest part of it is at five feet, and actually the highest part is where that uh, bow is on the um, on that metal fence on the back with the gate that was already there and approved. Number 11 deals with chain link fencing, not applicable. Number 12, design new fences and walls in keeping with the historic character of the neighborhood and architectural style of the house. Um, there's definitely brick walls, and, and, and to be clear, I did that walk and literally 30 minutes to walk around one block. I didn't go down any other streets and other, other brick houses. Uh, and the brick houses almost all have those brick retaining walls. So the material is certainly there. I will readily acknowledge that brick is a unique uh, and somewhat rare uh, material used in Monford. And every time I see a brick house, I'm like, oh, there's a brick house. Um, so it, it's, it's rare, but it does exist. And it matches perfectly the, the, uh, the foundation of this um, on the back of the house. Um, Now, that, that's it in terms of the standards. That's, that's all 12. So I, I think they match up well in having that kind of justification uh, rooted in, in your fence and wall standards. And I was just going to remind the commission, because we've had after the facts before, I don't know how much information is in your packets about the prior approval. But I recall this application, and it wasn't about so as much about material like the fence versus a wall, which are distinguishable. You can't just replace a fence with a wall. But it was about, as Alex said, the built environment. It was it, it much more focused on landscape features. I think we even came down to talking about swimming pools, which aren't mentioned as a landscape feature, and looking at, at some historic pools that were at historic. Houses. I don't even think there was one in Montford, but some, I think the either the architect at the time came over with a, a, a swimming hole. It wasn't a structured pool. So the majority of conversation was about how structural what was happening in that backyard was. And I just, you know, so I, I hear what you're saying about those standards. There's some other standards that I, I think might be considered, and, and what we what you're always tasked with is what if this came forward and there wasn't something there and, and this brick wall was around the swimming pool? It would be a factor in what you're discussing, you know, what you're considering. Would you have approved it? Or what would your questions have been about a brick wall around the swimming pool? And it might go to your questions about land, how landscaped is that on the outside so you don't see it whether it fits in, certainly the, the size of that site was always unique. I just wanted to remind, especially new commissioners who, who are thinking, what do we do with something that's, you know, it's already been built, but you really just have to go back and try the best you can to say, what, if this had come forward as a brand new application, what would we be thinking and asking about how it meets the standards? I think that came to us, I would encourage pool not to compete with the house. There's a lot going on and that's a whole nother um, programming that's uh, shouting loud uh, at the house and taking away the input from the original historic 
the new um, pool area, and it, it just, it's bringing a lot of energy. And I think with age, it is what it is. And, 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 and to, to give the counter to, to Janice's point, and it's, it's, you're, you're dead on, of course, obviously, and, and that's what, what you have to do. The, the practical reality that, that this property owner finds himself in, in is uh, either we are able to get a certificate of appropriateness from this board, um, and again, looking at it as though it was, it was done back then, um, or if not, then we have to tear down all the wall and go back and put the black aluminum fence around the pool. And so those, those are kind of the extremes, that just a, the harsh practical reality where he is. And I'm not saying it's wrong or right, but that, that's where he is right now. Are there any examples in Montreux of brick fences that are not retaining walls? It seems like all the examples that I know of masonry walls actually site retaining walls. I, I don't know, but I'll be happy to, to, to do those steps and, 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 and make the, 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 the walk around to find. Uh, the thing that I did with the two sets of pictures was one to, to, to look at the materials, because I think materials are one thing, and uh, stone and brick walls, walls that aren't a Montford fence. I know I can put a Montford fence you know, in my front yard all the time. I, we know that. Um, you know, so I was looking for something that was different than something I knew was already approved, and that's why I had those pictures of those, of those stone walls. And then the, the pictures of the brick retaining walls uh, our primary, actually I know there's a, a brick wall that's not a retaining wall, it's uh, on the corner right across from Tall John's. The rest of that wall doesn't, across from Tall John's at the corner of uh, Monford and Chestnut. Um, down by the garage is retaining, out in the front is, is not a retaining wall. And it's because the house is brick. There's, I guess one other thing that came to mind to me when looking at all of the precedent pictures is that this seemed significantly taller than most most of the walls that were in the photographs. I think most of them looking, you know, like two, 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 maybe like three feet max, or this is a couple feet taller. So it seems different, you know, because you do you don't see over it like you do those other smaller walls. Yeah, th th that height's driven strictly by the insurance piece, and that's why the, the height of that black aluminum fence was what it was because the insurance is going to require it. Um, the mitigating piece on that height is when you're in the backyard of your neighboring property, you're looking, you're looking down on that. It's, it's, it's below grade to you. So it doesn't feel as tall. It only feels that tall when you're on the pool deck. Just to go back to the like, investigating examples of brick walls in Montford, it, it might be pretty tricky to do in this case because there could be plenty of brick walls in rear yards that were approved and we just don't know that because we don't you know, know every application most of us would agree that all the examples you're going to find in the street view or walking around or, you know, driving through the district are going to be concrete or stone. And that's just the, those are just the predominant features in Lockford, but that's not to say there aren't brick. I think, I think part of it is determining whether it's contextual to the site and what's already been built. Um, and also, I think to go back to the landscaping, have to have a barrier because of the pool um, and it is to Derek's point it, it, I mean I think it's matured a lot like I was struck yesterday by how much like I when I saw the pictures I was like oh no this looks like it you know it is a lot of built out area but when I went to the site yesterday it, it felt softer within the landscape than it looks in the pictures I think um, and so I think if maybe, I mean, I, I don't know where you, I'll obviously let you guys continue on to land where you land, but I'm supportive of after the fact approval for it and then just ensuring that there is adequate landscape around it so that it's, it, that it's buffered. Yeah, I, and I would be very happy to, to add on a um, request that, that the approval come with a condition that the, uh, the, the wall exterior facing um, other properties uh, shall be um, uh, appropriate in the landscape so as to obscure the, the, the brick wall or break it up. Um, I'd be very happy to add that condition in. I'm sorry to spend I your was, money, but. It was one of the commissioners that was here when, when this initial proposal happened. And I remember us making the point that we wanted to keep that back space as like natural as possible. And I remember us like 
saying, you know, we need to screen the fence well so it's a more natural, soft appearance. So one one way to look at it is that like we were trying to hide the fence with greenery. Mm -hmm. And so if that's been achieved and you couldn't really see the fence, then you probably can't really see the wall either. And yeah, I think my my frustration is when you read a list of 12 things in the Montford guidelines or standards, we're calling it standards, there's plenty of points that are that what's been done meets that bullet point list of 12 things where they're applicable. Brick it's allowed. And I think the I I lose ground there in my own thinking because I don't I think that the heavily structured feel of the backyard is incongruous. Yeah, because it's incongruous with the con the general context of Montford in a way that is um, because there's, you know there's more natural space on the site. There's not more natural topography. There's not the hard corners and the hard lines and the really massive visual feel of, of the brick. And I think it's a little bit weak in my mind to just because no one can see it, it's okay. There was no structure to that backyard when Montford was in its prime historical period of significance. And now there's this giant brick box in it. And that, I struggle with that because that's where I depart from the list of 12 things that say, yes, it can be brick and yes, it can be four feet and go, but it's, it's, a, it's a big departure from what the historic landscape would have been and is still in many places in Montford. And that the places where these really big structural things like stone walls exist are normally not four feet, or they're retaining a small amount of dirt in the front yard or in a side yard or next to a driveway or whatever, and that they're not very often the thing that's creating this massive visual boundary, just as a, in general, congruity. No, I, I think if you read page 36, it, it, that's like, obviously we have the list of standards, but then there's also like the page before for each section of standards gives some context to why what the, the, right. yeah, what the historic context was, which was more naturalized. You know, if you just use the things on page 37, then there's boxes to check that say, yeah, this is compliant, it's congruent, so we have or that it meets the standards. I definitely agree with you. It's like viewing it in the context of the neighborhood as a whole and the feel of a typical Montford property as a whole, that it does deviate from that. Like we're always trying to make things more natural, you know, right, and to just soften it. This is really, you know, maybe we use landscaping for that in Montford a lot to so soften things, foundation plantings and in front of fences. And, you know, we, we maybe use landscaping for that purpose a lot, but this, was a, this, is, a, this is a hard one to do. Okay. So I think monolithic that I don't. I'm trying to struggle on how to make it fit more in the neighborhood. Is it filling in some so that there's a lot more natural plant? The, the, yes, on on both sides of the wall, and, and I appreciate. I mean, on, I, I mean, like in the whole as a whole to soften. How could you soften that whole thing? Yeah, yes, the, the the photos that you see um, or were from several years ago that, that you can see that, that landscaping there. And I appreciate you saying that about the landscaping coming in and, and making that softer because she made those remarks as we're standing on the interior and you're looking out and you can see the, the landscaping starting to blossom in the spring to, to obscure the wall even from the inside, but certainly on the outside. And again, I'm very happy to add that condition that uh, landscaping on the outside of the wall uh, will be designed so as to obscure the, the view of the wall from adjoining properties. 
draw this out even more, but is it helpful if you coordinate a site visit to go and see in person? Because I imagine that a lot of you probably didn't go back there since it is, you know, so then, yeah. I know that it sounds like the property owner maybe isn't there that often, and so I was able to coordinate it there and go. So I, I would just offer that as an option if you guys are open to coordinating something like that with us. So. I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm willing to put the work in to try to not say no. Yeah. And I, I, that would certainly help me to get better context. I think that, especially now that it's more springy and we can see, you know, that, I mean, I'm, so I don't want to say no. I think it would be, I think it would be helpful, you know, just being able to see, especially for, for me, the, um, like the impact from, from the outside with screening. Since the pictures we have are all kind of from the inside, yeah. is that something that you all would sure, do? sure, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Okay. The caveat to that, just as an FYI, is that we, the commissioners, can't discuss with you while we're on site um, the project with you, so it makes it kind of a little bit yeah, awkward. I mean, uh, it's a very no, silent we, site visit. <laughs> <laughs> no, so we, we live there, but we're, we both work. Uh, my wife's a teacher, and I've worked right in the city, so um, okay. anytime during the day. We don't want to avoid you. We need to avoid you. We just can't talk to you. Though. Yeah, and, and you can't all go at once because that would right. be public. Right. So you can't all go at once. So you may be a staggered trip. You could do less than a quorum. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little coordination to go with that. And I know there are a lot of design professionals up here. So if there are things that you see, uh, particularly related to landscape design, that would make it more palatable or, or easier to say yes, um, you know, please please note those things when we when we gather back. In, in this room, and we're we're working with a landscaper now to add additional, uh, you know, additional plantings around the house. And one idea that we had was putting like vertical gardens on the actual walls. So we could, you know, um, we thought that, that would just be a, a nice look, but needed to get through this before we consider something like that. I mean, I think it would be worthwhile um, on a continued meeting after a site visit to see some proposed uh, landscaping. To consider at that time as to not delay unless you're comfortable approving a, a staff level after the fact you know with as a condition to a major work i'm thinking i'm thinking ahead but i think it would be helpful yeah, i think we could just cross that bridge i think it just depends on yeah. how you well and, and our timing needs are, are different than applying for it before you right. build it, There's so the it, starting has already happened. It, yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> right. you don't have to worry about what it looks like because it's already there. We're like, how do we make yeah. it better? So we don't have that same piece. Um, I just have to stay true to Alex that we're continuing to move this along. Right. Um, so yeah, I will, yeah, absolutely. I'll continue that. We can coordinate. Um, we, and we did actually, we did the site visit for um, the Griffith House. We did just notice it because there were there were you can do it more than seven. Want. Or more than six commissioners there, so um, I'll just circle back with an email to everyone to see who can come, and then we can mm -hmm. coordinate from there if that's okay with everyone. Yeah. And you could, after the visit, you could give feedback to Alex about landscape things you'd like, and then she can communicate that with yeah. the yeah. applicant, and, and maybe then start working on a plan, a landscape plan. So that when they come back, they have some. Great. All right. Um, so thank, thank you for, for working with us. Would yes. need to just into the microphone request a continuance. Um, may we have this matter continue to allow for those items we just discussed? Every May. Does it need to be a date specific? Specific would be May. When is, when is the May one? May 10th. I know I'm out of town that week. Okay. We can continue it to June. To June? Yeah, okay. that's no problem. Thank well, you. I'll make a motion to continue this hearing to the June meeting. Second. I second. Lots of seconding. That <laughs> <laughs> was a third vice chair all, here, so. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you all.
Yeah, that's fine. Now that we're done with this, I didn't want them to have to wait. Yeah, of course, that's, that's <laughs> like fine. Super use body for your brain. Yeah. should be like mimicking the topography and not like imposing itself on the topography. Yeah, that's that's <laughs> what, tell me what the fix is. We don't have to have a solution. Mm -hmm. What's the solution? I mean, I don't know how I would do it. I've never been able to scale it. I, yeah, that's exactly, I was like, that looks like it's a, uh, no, that's right. why no friends have houses. That's the one. That's the one. That's the one. Because then you could fit. Well, I mean, fit is freezing in here. Mm -hmm. My toes are so cold. Just, just to say, just say that we do all the things. Then you got leaves in your pool. Well, that's not my problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you. Sculpture trees. Does it look a lot 
different than this picture? I mean, we're going to keep that Yeah, we can't no, talk about it. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. All right. Mayor Rose and Emily. Oh, not the, I heard. Tim Shannon. Tim Shannon. Tim Shannon. services a new sign program so hopefully we'll have some nicer looking more effective signs with QR codes and stuff so stay tuned for that but um, that is something new that I don't think I've updated you um, and then the other thing I was just going to notice on the you probably noticed if you looked at the meeting minutes we are using trying out this new AI software that basically is like a transcription service so that's why the minutes are going to be like eight miles long. Oh. <laughs> but the benefit in, in so many ways is that you really don't have to go through it with a fine tooth comb because it's already been you know reviewed by us and you know make sure that everything is correct as far as who's speaking etc um, so that's different um, but hopefully we'll save Avery some time in his day <laughs> and is it affordable I think so I, I can't remember how much our admin staff said it was but I don't think it was very much like originally the admin staff was asking websites where you can like people will upload recordings of meeting minutes and then people will download them and transcribe them and so that's what she does. Does it pay well? Wow. Huh? <laughs> what? So does it pay well? Um, Mine should work. Right? It's, a, it's a volume okay. type of, so the more she does obviously the more she gets paid. Okay. Um, and there's some awful ones where you're just like I don't understand what anyone is saying and there's 28 people talking in this meeting or whatever so she's gotten pretty selective about what she picks to type but. yeah on that same note and I can't remember if I mentioned this before but I, I, I hadn't looked at our audio really since we started coming back in person but I did want to try to edit the minutes in the previous month and I could hardly hear anyone um, and I think it's because that audio is that audio connected in? it's not connected it's the but the live stream isn't so mm -hmm. just another reason to yell into your microphone i guess if you think about it but and today this was on and it was loud i know i know and it, it, the thermostat for that's over here so we can always if you guys are hot or cold or whatever like that we can just you know somehow get our flag is down and we'll try to adjust um, the first item under other business is also just sort of a housekeeping item. It's a amendment to your rules of procedure. And it came up when Ron Sneed was representing you all during the 
um, sidewalk project, and he asked us about the language in your rules of procedure around quorum and maybe a slight difference between them and the state statute. And so that's just been kind of edited to be more clearly the same. So you have to vote up. They have to yeah, right. You have to vote rules of procedure. So right. did we give them did we give you a deadline version for what yeah. we used to say and what we corrected it to? Yes, there's a there's a red line version in your folder. So well, we and there were just some other like really minor like typo corrections in there too. Are we voting on that today? Yeah. Okay. We probably should vote for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Where uh, what, I drove what all is the I'd like to approve the <laughs> I probably do too, but on that first <laughs> Can you take a look at some section? I might forego my reading of it if I um, it really, it's it's not explain the dude. It just oh, said that um, of all who are the voting members, and it said of all members who are present, and actually it's supposed to be a quorum of everybody that's appointed, whether you're present or not. So it, it was, oh, I it was not written it. correctly. So it's sort of like if there's 12 of you, but only six of you show up, right. we don't have, we, we still have to have a quorum of the 12. That makes sense. Sorry. Yeah, it was really, so I mean. Of, you know, but he caught it, so I was like, okay, well, we'll be discussing that later. I'm good. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Rules of Procedure Amendment. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> I know, I thought you were going to say no. And I, I know, right? <laughs> 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 I Want me to explain the executive committee's slate of officers? That would be very yeah. easy for you to do. That. Okay, okay. So um, the nominating committee gathered, and there's the slate of officers that was um, put, that's being put forth for the fiscal year that starts July one. Um, it will be Sue for the chair. So you all just need to, you can, anyone can nominate from the floor. You can nominate someone else to nominate yourself. You can ask a question. You can discuss and you can hold an impromptu debate amongst the nominees. <laughs> and I will say too that just, okay. as, an, just as, as an FYI for those that are not on the nominating committee, the nominating committee did correspond with the people who are on the slate to make sure they were in the red list. Mm -hmm. Good to and so without further nominations or discussion, is there a we motion to approve the slate of officers as presented? So moved. All of I can do it. I'll okay, make a motion. I've never made a motion. You can make a motion. Right? I never have. Let's do it. This is almost my last meeting, and I'm going to make a motion. I move to um, approve the slate of officers as nominated by the nominating committee. I will second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? How's that for my first motion in six years? I think it did very well. It only took years. It was a pretty safe one. It was good. Accomplish that. Well, <laughs> because I was absent from a meeting and got nominated for chair, and I've been sitting in this seat ever since. <laughs> so, so better be here. I wasn't ready to make a motion, and then they just put me right here instead. So that's that. Blame it on Brian. We're gonna completely blame it on Brian. Yeah. Hundred percent. Blame it on Brian. Um, I don't even think I was at that meeting. <laughs> I was like, what? Make it even more fun. <laughs> yeah. Was <laughs> the chair what? <laughs> We did not do that to you. You didn't. You were very nice. We were Thank very you. forward with that. And then who else do you start? July? July 1? July 1. Okay. 
What does that is she mean? allowed to practice like a baby? No. Natalie, are you going to turn over your child? But I can over my gavel. You're going to have to touch your gavel. No, the introduction. That introduction. I think oh, it started with that. Ryan, and then, but mm -hmm. everything that she reads beforehand, I'm, I'm always so proud because I mean, for a quasi-judicial procedure, I'm always telling any lawyers that come like, wait. They Wait, know their, they know their quasi-judicial stuff. We do they're know our quasi-judicial stuff. Well, that's because All we that got ourselves in a little bit of trouble. Right from the statute. Yeah. But it's important information. Yeah. So, um, so, yeah, well, I think what this I will be. Just make sure you're not. Yeah. I'll be very you. interested to see if your script still has Emily Spring's name in it. Yeah, I have. Because every month, I'm like, <laughs> what month I, is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what month is it? What's my name? Well, it did get you. the remnant from pandemic and like when no one could figure out what month or day it was <laughs> I was editing the script every month for the chair <laughs> it was edited this month and it's been October in my sc I, in the script for I like six because I remembered to edit it for you this one time <laughs> oh I was so nervous that first virtual meeting because I've never been in the chair before Crazy. that was the first meeting my first meeting it was went to like nine oh yeah and I was like what did I agree to? <laughs> Better than some who were here in January for their first six-hour meeting. Oh gosh, that was it's awesome. yeah, it, it's a lot. It's so so. Emily, are you staying on until July, or are you like done? Like my last meeting was March. I'm here until they fill my seat, or it's July when she has to get another chair. Okay. And then if she gets if she leaves before July, you have to. I was just making sure you weren't peacing out. <laughs> <laughs> I might peace out before May because I don't really. But then Emily's probably having leaving us too. So you know what? You're too Come on, I want to be here for, for that. Don't but mess around. My, my last month is what, like June, anyways? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brian was supposed to be at my first meeting as the chair, and then they filled his seat before he could, and I was left alone <laughs> by myself on the first virtual Done meeting we've way. ever had. All right, so we we start researching the award. I did not hear from anyone except for Amy, who thought maybe the Nina Simone House project, but I don't know. I think the script is too is too big. Yeah, it's it's pretty big, and also I don't know that we know anybody that has like a hyper local connection to that I mean, project other than I just find one so interest in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I know that. Annie at our last meeting put forth Dale Slusser's name, and I know Will could probably, well, you know Dale well, don't you? And yeah. I, I've met Dale, but I don't know him well, but he is definitely, a, I mean, there's no question in my mind that he would be a great candidate. He's a historian and has greatly contributed to um, certainly storytelling, architectural history, documentation in our community. How, what else? It's all on. important. No, he's a, a great research researcher on um, history. And Ben brought up Jack. Jack Thompson, yeah. Um, he, he was the former director of the Preservation Society. He moved on to work for uh, Mecklenburg County and then now is with Preservation North Carolina as their Western um, office person in, in Shelby. There's been some, I mean, the the candidates that we gave awards to, the stories of their contributions were pretty impactful, mm -hmm. uh, I think, for sure, and that they, they certainly seemed, um, those were all exceptional choices for awards. Anybody else have any 
That's so that's usually good for giving us some That's why I'm being quiet, because I'm in the hog of the room. Um. <laughs> and we, if, if, if it's helpful, we can also table this if you guys need more time till the May meeting. I just need enough time to, we need be enough ready. time to get the award done. Where are the done. Griffin Awards? It's May the... Um, very end. Is very end. Yeah, it's, it's 26 something. Right, and it's at, um, and I wrote this down, at home, so that's not helpful. I'll send it to you all if you, whoever wants to attend. It's um, May 25th, and it's, I believe it's somewhere on Broadway. Oh, yeah, it's uh, right next to those kaleidoscopes. So the crosswalk and the crosswalk main go. Um, the brightly colored. On Broadway? It's called, a, it's an event space. On Broadway? On Broadway. Um, okay. And I think I it starts at 5.30, I think, and we can, certainly we, we will need somebody to volunteer to present the award, um, so think on that. And then um, um, we'll obviously cover the cost of attendance. Do you guys have other ways to present if you're not a member? That sounds like a really good job for Sue. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy what do you to want do it. I think that'll yeah. be cool since you're the visiting chair. Yeah, I'm happy to do it. Second seat. Awesome, thank you. So we, I mean, we've got to make a decision in the May meeting, which means, well, if you're going to put forth other nominations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we will. I have a one. I do think for those people that don't know, the two folks under consideration, that we maybe get a paragraph or, okay, or a I'll website ask. link or something that might help us help like, know. For anybody looking, you don't know who I am. Mm -hmm. I'll ask them. I'll ask something on Cliffdale. Did, do you feel like you could put something together on Jack? Yeah. yeah. I don't, I guess, I'm sure his bio's got to be somewhere. I think I'm maybe connected with ben him. Ben Brennan is a name been made for a couple of years, so every, I, we can find him. Yeah, I call. And then you can, like, email, can distribute that by email? Sure. Anything else? Just as a reminder, our our training, our NAPC training is next Friday, so um, if you didn't sign up and you want to come, let me know, but it um, starts at, I think registration is 8.30 to 9, and then we... How long does it go? Till 4.30. What is this? The National Alliance of Preservation Commission mm -hmm. training we've been working on. We've got a grant, a certified local government grant to host this training, and the NAPC they are great at facilitating these trainings. It's like a pretty intensive training session. So and you're recovering um, preservation law, design guidelines, and also an exercise for applying design guidelines, education and outreach with an equity focus. Um, I can recirculate the agenda if, if there's any more things that come into mind. That's the 24th. Yeah, it looks weird. Next Friday. Is that the Masonic Temple? Yeah. It's going to be in the theater on the second story, so if you haven't ever been there, it's a pretty magical space. Yeah. And I think we've gotten, besides our local attendance, there's probably about 30, 35 folks. Yeah, we've got people coming from as far as Cary and Forsyth County. Great. Well, if there's room, I would like to go. Well, I'll send you the invite, and we'll just plan on, well, or I'll put you on the list, and I'll recirculate the agenda again if anybody decides they don't make it or wants to come. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was a big one. That was a big one. You might need that.